Welcome to World Class Bullshitters, the epitome of pop culture. I'm your host, Jeff Hicks, and with me tonight is the one, the only, Dion Green. Baby, baby, boys and girls, children of all ages, baby, we back. We added again one more time into the fray, dear fellows. We got I'm this. ready. <laughs> Up next, the man chuckling in the background is the last standing Samoa no more. He's the Bombay bad boy, Big Rig Nicky Tam. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm glad to be here on this wonderful Thursday night with all of you. We're glad to have you, as always, my friend. And finally, you know him, you love him. Say hello to American Ramrod, Coach Kendo Slice. Glad to be here. I'm sure we've got more people in the audience than AEW does, so we got that going for it. <laughs> God damn. So, so, folks, welcome in to tonight's episode number 398. Uh, yes, over the last week, it's been crazy for WCBS. You've probably seen us in places we've never been uh, wrestling world. So I went to AEW. I was given some box seats to go see AEW on Saturday night. And I went with a group of friends and we had a time. And so we're in there and we noticed that this very small arena that only seats about 10,000 people, it's an intimate setting, wasn't full, wasn't half full, only had moved slightly over a thousand tickets. And everybody was leaving like during the show still because they had like multiple things they would film at once and they're like stick stick around and it's a saturday night and i thought all right here we are and a lot of people kept leaving they kept leaving through the main event of uh what was collision they left during the main event of the the, of the titles show and they left during something else and so i videotaped this mass exodus in this fairly empty arena and all of a sudden, I noticed it, it's crazy engagement. Nick goes, did you see that it got 3 million uh, whatever on Twitter? And I went, no. Oh, and holy shit, that's getting us to our goal. And so then I find out on the High Council that WrestleMania had mentioned us in a video. They, they showed the video that I fucking shot. <laughs> and so I was laughing. And then it gets even better because apparently, according to one of our listeners, Eric Bischoff was talking about it on his podcast too. So... Uh, Thank you to everybody who saw us at AEW and all that wonderful, I don't know, I had a time. Can't say it was a it great was, time. It, it was it was insane because my phone, like, it, it wouldn't stop. Like, the Twitter thing wouldn't stop scrolling because I would like I would try to like comments and, and respond to stuff. Couldn't keep up. Couldn't keep up. It was well, insane. Well, that's how it should be here on WCBS. Um what did you think about it, Kendo? You're a uh, you're a you're a wrestling fan. I won't call you a diehard AEW fan because I don't want to call you names. Uh, what did you think of this situation? <laughs> I thought it was funny, like because you sent the video, like it got posted or something. I somehow or another I see it sometime on Sunday, and I'm like, okay, that's cool or whatever. No, you messaged saying something about the engagement that was happening with that video. So I pull up the tweeter machine to see what's going on with it. And I watched the video and everything like that. But then I see that it's got like 2 million impressions or something like that. And I'm just like, wow, really? And then so I start looking at the comments and people not exactly getting the joke about Tony Khan melting down. Instead, it was more of Tony Khan rambling like an awkward fucking teenager that is, did his homework at the very last minute doing a book report that he didn't about a book he didn't read. And begging people to stick around to watch the show that probably had been going on for about five hours at that point. And it's just like, I mean, the dude's got his dream. He dreamt about having his own wrestling promotion. Shit. I dreamed about being a baseball player when I was a kid, but if you handed me 10 million bucks and I got to buy the Cardinals, guess what? I'm not going to do install myself in charge of day-to-day -day operations because I don't know how to run a baseball team. I'll just go to the games and sit in the owner's box and, you know, get some sweet gash, but that's neither here nor there. <laughs> So I thought I got it was a serious hilarious. question for you. Yeah. What year are you gonna travel back in time that you can buy the Cardinals for ten million dollars? Oh shit. And I how can you the go there? Because I I want to go with you. Well, I'm trying to think. Like they've only ever been bought and sold twice in their history, and once was back in like the early, late 50s, early 60s when the Anheuser Busch or August Jr. bought the team. I don't know how much you paid for it. And they sold them again like 25 years ago. Anheuser Busch sold them to the DeWitt family. And oh, Joyce DeWitt, nice. Yeah, Joyce DeWitt. Yeah, her dad bought it. Um, so you know, three's company, and you know, that's also a triple. So a team's a crowd. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, so there you go. But I don't know. It's just I thought it was awesome that you got that much engagement out of it. I think it's funny that people got extremely butthurt about a lot of it too. 
And then I got blamed for the video. So there was that too. I love that part as well. I'm like, I had nothing to do with it. But okay, blame the white guy. You want to show how woke you are and who you want to insult and blame for posting this and making you mad. You pick the white guy because you wanted to show everybody. Hey man, I always I always blame Dion. It just it just where where I go every time. It's just how I how I do things. <laughs> well, I'm Dan. <laughs> Like someone else once said, it was me, Austin, and I trolled you all. That shit was hilarious. So thanks, wrestling fans. We love oh you guys. God. Because we are wrestling fans. Uh, I don't think people get it. Hey, Dion, where were we uh, just a few weeks ago? What were we doing a couple weekends back? Uh, well, we were over on the south side of Philly visiting some friends, and then we just went to this little show called WrestleMania. And it was two nights. It was kind of a fun thing. It was windy as fuck. It was a good time. We saw some fun stuff. Yeah, and, you know, we liked it so much that we've retroactively done it for many, many years. I feel like you've been for 10, and I've been for 18. So, mm -hmm. folks that are new to the channel, we love wrestling. We'll talk about it. So if you found us and you thought you'd subscribe because of that, Ask us wrestling related questions. We've been fans for decades. Everybody here has watched oh, yeah. wrestling at some point, and we've all been to Mania oh, yeah. multiple times. Yeah. So I do have a question though. I forgot to ask you guys last week about WrestleMania because you were in Philly. Was Motown Philly in fact back again? Yeah, it was confirmed. Oh, confirmed. And I think a little okay. uh, speaking of wrestling, got a little uh, nice little pop out of the wifey. So you just earned some more brownie points there, uh, Kendo. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Well, that's it always was important. Bad. Now, folks, we are back. It's Thursday night. We talked about our AEW pop. Let's talk about you wonderful people because we have an awesome show lined up for you tonight. So first off, uh, we're going to thank our new patrons. Now, we did not forget about you guys. The emails went to a different folder for this part of Patreon. So what we want to do real quick is give a shout out to our newest patrons because you guys have been growing and a special thank you. Uh, let's see. We have our friend Tim. Thank you very much. We also have our friend, uh, where are you at as well? Uh, Tom, as well as, uh, let's see. Ch -ch -ch -ch. Uh, Paul Otis is always a cool guy. So thanks for being a patron in general, Paul, as well as everybody else. But uh, yeah, folks, we want to thank you guys. There'll be new content coming your way in just a couple days. So be on the lookout yep. for that. There'll be new videos from us starting tomorrow. I have some new stuff planned for you guys, as well as a great response video to some stuff that everyone's been talking about. And well, you want the world-class take on it. So join us tomorrow for that. Well, we have a big show lined up tonight. We're going to be talking about some awesome topics. But two other things we want to mention as well. WCBS, we're going to Japan. We are going to the top. Not maybe of Mount Fuji, but uh, of the world. So, folks, we are going to go to Star Wars Celebration in Japan next year, 2025. Uh, be on the lookout for all the stuff that we're going to do in the build-up to it. But right now, we are at the foot of the hill. Just imagine we're walking on flat ground. But we're going there. We're going to the top. And you can join us along the journey each and every step. So, follow us live. We'll put stuff out on social media. You'll be able to know exactly what we're doing, how we're doing it, because you're going to want to be a part of it. It's not about Star Wars Celebration. It's the whole country of Japan. WCBS is going to see as much as it, of it as we can and we're gonna have a great time so 2025 we're coming but anyway after that folks <laughs> earlier than look at before that i'm excited about japan i'm jumping the gun we got woke busters uh be on the lookout for the kickstarter in just a few weeks by the end of the month it'll be up book is done i'm done i've been done we're just waiting for a few things and i want to make sure that we get this uh a, a real 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 trailer done so other than that folks there's really nothing else to do i don't want to spoil the fun or the surprises woke busters but uh, the guys have seen a bunch of it. It's bright. It's colorful. It's funny. It's action packed. It's everything you want it to be. And it's everything I want it to be because I wrote and drew it. So folks, thank you for giving me the opportunity to bring you woke busters and folks, let's make that the biggest comic event of this year, next year, and every year moving forward because we're world-class. Um, uh, thank you to our friend on Facebook that says, I look so adult when I wear a suit. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, yeah. th 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 that's also really, is that, is that a pin you're wearing, Jeff? Is that what that is? On your oh shirt? yes, on the lapel I have the woke busters pin. There you go. There oh, you go. Fancy. Shameless know, right? <laughs> Well, gotta love, it. gotta love it. Hey, I like this jacket, so I figure I get some more uh, uses out of it. Uh yes, I will be the biggest thing in Japan since Godzilla. Literally. Well, <laughs> I won't, I promise not to step on Tokyo. <laughs> They'll just they'll sing a different song about me instead of Godzilla. Yeah, you gotta bring back Blue Oyster Cult. Be like, all right, boys, we got a new hit for you. <laughs> that would that would be awesome. Jeff Zilla. Jeff Zilla. 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 
I, I'd be down for that. Um, maybe we should get AI to write the lyrics because uh, apparently AI does all this stuff with uh, movies like Civil War. We'll talk about that in just. A I moment. do know. We I, I well, well, one one of my friends is is very is very deep in AI, and he and he's made a couple of songs and stuff uh, right now, and he knows that knows exactly what he's doing. So we can get it done if we need to. We need to find out how much it's going to cost to do AI songs because I got a bunch of ideas. We should just listen. You need. Then, then I'll, I'll, I will. Albums. I will get you in touch with my friend. You guys can can talk and hash it out because he's he's a, he's he's the one who's on like the edge of it all the time. He's always doing the music, the animation, the movie stuff, all all of it, all of it. It's, it's oh, he does animation. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, definitely shoot me his email address because I do want to talk to him. But oh, folks. No, we will deal with all of our business off the air. We have business for you tonight. Like the word of the day from our friend Joseph Bianoch has been a member for 14 months. I don't even have enough fingers to put that up there, but he says, good evening all. The word of the day is splooge. Hot tub splooge machine. Crimson splooge. Get that checked out. Fistful of splooge. <laughs> Stop or my mom will splooge. And Avengers splooge game. I feel like Stop or my mom, my, my mom will splooge is very 2024. Like that's yeah. very yeah, I'll get all got her splooge back. <laughs> um, splooge man, splooge man, a fistful of splooge. Yeah, midnight collateral splooge, collateral midnight splooge, splooge train. Yeah. There you go. Uh, yeah, the emperor's new splooge. splooge. Is that a movie? <laughs> yeah, the emperor's new splooge. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna splooge finger. you, sucker. <laughs> <laughs> Don't Never be a menace to South that. Central while drinking your splooge in the hood. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's terrible. Ugh. That's terrible. Ugh. It's a totally different type of movie. It is. It is. We'd... It would still Somebody feature get... Dashiki, though. That's yeah, true. Dashiki. Somebody get, Axel... Somebody get Axel... Axel Braun on the phone. We, 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 we got ideas. We got titles. It would explain how awesome. Dashiki gets pregnant all the time. <laughs> yeah. It really, really would. Uh, we need to tell everybody, too, folks... Um, this summer, we have an event that we keep mentioning, but not enough. The Jake Paul fight. We will have a live stream. Uh, we will have our own WCVS commentary. The guys will be together for the first time in, what, two, three years, right? Loudy's wedding is 2021? Yeah. Yep. 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 So yep. for the first time, folks, in three years, the WCVS crew will be back together in person. And you can join us as the fifth bullshitter. So uh, that's going to be July for that fight. So you guys know 20th. the dates. It's a big event. July 20th. You go. July 20th, yep. Yeah. Yeah, and Jake Paul's going to hopefully get depacitated. It could be his last fight. I hope I it's I feel like I, 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 I feel like we need to get on, on, on some sort of betting app and, you know, and talk. And, and oh, you have, we'll have plenty of options for that one, I'm yeah, sure. Yeah, put, oh, yeah. put some bets down on, on, on what's going to happen and see, see, see where it goes. Uh, we need to figure that out. We also need to make bets between us so we can make it really interesting here on the show. Like, oh no, well, yeah, we can totally have a have have a board and everything set up for all that stuff for sure. I yeah. want to figure out how we can bet like shots, how we can bet like all kinds oh of crazy God. stuff. Because, see, folks, what you got to understand with WCBS, it's you can listen to the commentary or the live stream of an event, but you want to stick around afterwards because that's when it gets crazy. That's when the repercussions of the shit you made us do on air kick in. Like the rise of the Skywalker. Rise of Skywalker stream was great. It was legendary. A lot of people were watching it. But the best part is after we talked about the movie, had to read the Super Chats and drink the whole time, and then uh, Dion magically made rallies appear. So thanks for that, Dion. <laughs> I'm a magician, uh, baby. I remember, I remember coming down. Man. I remember coming down. I, I, you know, dr you know, hung over and like it was like a war zone in that living room of that fucking Airbnb. They were, yeah. they were so angry. <laughs> That well, that's how it's weekend, though. <laughs> Camp Kidney. We can get that place back anytime you need it. It's, oh, it's well, yeah, we we'll definitely have to do that, man. They say you can never go home again. Well, you can go to Camp Kidney again. <laughs> we'll still watch Penn and Teller bullshit. Then we'll go yeah. watch oh, Night Court in the upstairs TV room. Yeah, and Emerald Lagasse. Yeah, Emerald. Fucking Emerald. Taste of whatever. It was one of those, folks, that, that was a great day. <laughs> That was a good day. It was a great day. So, Kendo, we're going to have another one of those great days in three months and two days from now, folks. So join us. Be a part of it. We're going to have a lot of fun. My money's on Mike Tyson. But uh, we'll talk more about that the closer we get. We should Airbnb that. That's just not a find, problem. Like uh, some shack up place up there in uh, in Michigan or something and just be like, this whole house now, is a question. Ours. 
if if okay so if we're gonna do that if the channel's gonna get us a place then do does it need to be in that city or should it be at a cooler location that's not inconvenient for anybody doesn't mean dion doesn't we don't go to michigan i'm just saying like if we're in specific city where, where dion is or do we want to go i don't know an hour away and get something crazier if it's going to be in the same price range i mean we could go to goddamn I'm rapids okay with that. i live here so i that's <laughs> nothing but a hop and a skip for me yeah, yeah. Okay. Dion's like i gotta go 30 minutes down the road to, to be with these yeah. knuckleheads. Oh, okay. yeah. shit. if that's the case why don't we just go an extra 30 minutes down the road and just fucking go to lake michigan and get like a fucking you know love nest out there or something like that on the way Island, new haven areas yeah. Right, you know, it's it's very very nice. Grand Rapids, there are plenty mm-hmm. plenty of places that would be fantastic near little tiny cities. We can go and get in a little trouble if we want to, and then Saturday night, baby, we get you to relive what? the '90s and watch you know the what? fucking Zoomer get his a. You know what, Dion? Never fucking threaten me with a good time, okay? Don't do yeah. that shit. All right, man. <laughs> I mean, friends and family weekend, man. Just fucking get us a bit, a nice big retreat. We can just all hang out there and let my kid destroy the place (laughs) on a lake. Shit. (laughs) Like, man. So it's the fight at the lake house. I guess we'll have to come over to the lake house. There you go. I like it. I like that. Because what we can do is we can do live streams from the water. We can do. Yeah. Why not? Why not? We. Yeah. 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 Well, we'll have. I'll, I'll bring my extension cords and. And whatnot. And <laughs> That's we'll, the weirdest we'll thing. I'll bring my extension cords. We're set. Yes. Proper <laughs> preparation prevents piss poor performance. So you never know when. How you many? What? What was that? Peter, what, what was that? Peter, the power of eight. What, what was that? Yeah. Hey, man, it piece. is the eight P's, baby. It's the eight P's. <laughs> Don't worry. I'll bring. Middle. I'll bring. I'll bring my. I'll, I'll bring my camera equipment and stuff. We'll be fine. We'll be fine. Perfect. All right. Then, folks, join us. It's going to be awesome. Shit. Yeah. I was already excited to just hang out and eat Big John Steak and Onion and be drunk, but now it's going to be an event. So, yeah, apparently, apparently, bring something nice to wear on camera, boys. Anyway, on with the show. <laughs> uh, do. That'll we'll be do. in a few weeks. Talk to uh, so folks... <laughs> yeah, it's, it's... That's appropriate. That's appropriate. Yeah. I'll allow we're it. Want, gonna... we're, we're, we want to look classy, but we're also here to party. That's true. <laughs> You should wear a real cummerbund with that, though, Kendo. Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> if, if this was like the early 2000s, one of us would just wear a bow tie and a vest, and that's all they'd wear and run around the whole weekend. But uh, we're not on Jackass, so we're not going to do that. But oh, today, folks, is a very special day. On this day in 1938, Superman. So, folks, we love comics. We love to talk about this stuff. Obviously, we have Wokebusters is stealing solo, but Superman is in production right now. It's going to be out in 2025. We have a new Superman. We have a new Lois. We have a new universe, and we have a new director, James Gunn. And so over on social media today, James Gunn released an image of him, Superman's actor, and uh, Lois Lane's actor. I forgot their names. And they're all reading Superman comics, getting people excited uh, to celebrate Superman. So I just want to ask you guys a little, you know, since we're in the spirit of Superman, the first superhero and a superhero we all enjoy... Are you ready to give this movie a chance, or are you just turned off from DC as a brand since Zack Snyder? I'm, I'm not turned off from the brand. I mean, it's, that's one of the, the disadvantages of being, you know, a hardcore fan of that type of media, man. Being a, a comic book fan, you, you know, particularly characters that you like, you know, you kind of get bamboozled or honey dicked into watching movies and other properties based on them. So don't get me wrong, I ain't going to watch another Zack Snyder project unless i have a gun to my head uh or specifically <laughs> like hey you may get to talk to him face to face where you can just give him a barrage of what the fucks other than that i ain't watching anything but when it comes to superman you know i'm 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 always open i'm a lot <laughs> the last few years we've been we've been hurt so you know it, it definitely leads credence to being cautiously optimistic about certain uh, Superman projects oh, yeah. and waiting to see if it's good or not. But yeah, I mean, I'm, you know, I'm not turned off the brand that bad that yet. I'm not as disgruntled as I was a few years ago as a Lions fan with Superman. I'll say that. For now. <laughs> so it's maybe uh, look at, look where the Lions went. So all you got to do is believe exactly. it a little longer. Superman could be back in the conversation, baby. You know, you never know. Henry How Cavill, feel, I'm sorry they fucked you over. That'll be the first good Superman film in our lifetimes. Because uh, none of us were born for Superman too. That's that's true. That's true. But I mean, I do I do hold Christopher Reeves. You know, like he's 
he's he's the best. He's 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 the one I remember. He's the one I grew up with. So that's he what really I, is. I I like a lot. You know, even yeah, even even when he had his accent, I felt I felt terrible, and it was it was horrible to see him struggle to with that whole thing. Um, but yeah, even I don't know. The one the, the one off Superman movie we got was really weird, and I didn't really care for that too much. Superman Returns. Yeah, yeah, it just didn't really go the anywhere. Dean Kane one. No, no, not, no, not, not Brandon the, Ralph. Oh, yeah, Brandon okay. Ralph. That's the one. Yeah, I didn't really care for that one too much. It was okay. Um, Henry Cavill's one was really good. It was. It was. You know. Well, it wasn't really good. It was okay. He Sorry. was good. He was. Yeah, he, he was, was good. good. He was good. The movie was 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 very meh. But uh, I don't know. I I feel like I feel like they're trying to get Batman and Superman to to uh, you know to be their to be their top tier. Um, properties so they can really milk them even more so than anything else for all they're worth so we'll see how this goes but i just don't i'm i'm just not a fan of them constantly rebooting these these superheroes over and over again with different people different stories like and shit like that like i'm even with batman we have so many iterations of it now it's impossible to keep up with and if, oh, it if is we like as, yeah and if and if we as, as we as comic book fans and fans of, of the of the comic book genre can't keep up with that stuff how are normies going to even understand it you know that's 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 where the real money is oh yeah because you know we can go get excited but we're not going to go see like eight we're not going to buy eight tickets like a family like two families might so it's like you do have to appeal to them i'm not saying that you cast the fans aside though folks uh but yeah no i agree with your assessment of man of steel henry cavill's good but that movie I'm still pissed he broke a dude's neck. Like, why wouldn't you just like fly into space and you know throw him or something? Like Superman always does. He finds a way. When Superman doesn't have an answer, all shit's lost. So uh Kendo, your opinion, sir. Oh, look, I'm ready for a good Superman movie. You guys know how much I love Superman and Superman 2. Not so much everything that's come after that. I, I don't hate Dean Kane as Superman as much as Nick apparently does. And then <laughs> You know, I, I, yeah, the, the only reason why Man of Steel even was serviceable was because of Henry Cavill being so good. And then when we expected the Justice League to shit the bed and it, you know, just skid mark the bed, it, you know, Henry Cavill being in it was one of the better parts of the movie, having him in there as Superman. So I don't know. I, I just looked up the new, the guy that's playing Superman, never seen him anything, so I couldn't tell you anything about him. Same thing with Lois Lane. Don't know her at all. Um, at least she has a Wikipedia picture. Superman don't. But at the same time, James Gunn has given us good superhero comic movies. So we at least... I would say that instead of being cautiously optimistic like I normally am with a lot of this stuff, I'm actually just optimistic because I feel like maybe it'll be in good hands because it's a filmmaker that you know, tends to do well with the material he's given. So like, you know, he did good with the ones he's done, but at the same time, if it turns out to suck, well, then it's just one of those par for the course at this point type of situations, you know? So I feel like we could better hedge on this one. <laughs> Wait, is that going to be our new thing? If we think it's going to be good or not, we'll bet our hedge on it. Yeah, we'll just bet our hedge on it. On. All right, we're like, we're optimistic, on. but there's always a chance it could suck because of the fact that most superhero movies in the last shit it's probably more than five years because i mean in end game was okay but even before that like some of the last mcu movies weren't all that good leading up to it so it's like what are you gonna do it's let's true. hope it's good uh, hey i'm i'm on board it's expensive is shit to make so and people think why would you care about the profits of the box office of a movie because we all like superman to some degree uh, he's oh, yeah. like everybody's superhero like okay we all grew up in the era where he was still most people's first superhero. Like it's, it was ubiquitous. It was Superman or Batman. And then the Marvel characters. And then as we got slightly older, it was just Marvel. Marvel kind of dominated that nineties window. But anyway, my point is I'm very optimistic about this because you, Warner brothers realizes this is it for a while because you can do too much brand damage and then you have to take a break and they can't afford to take said break. So I believe they know that their feet are up on the against the fire, and that is why that they will find a way to make this one perform, and we will get this very 
appealing version of Superman, which will probably just be classic Superman. I know a lot of people really like the man over on uh, the Superman Lois show. Was it Taylor Hecklin or Hawkland? So he's kind of popular. Superman has more positivity behind him than he has in a long time. I'd say the last 10 years has done a lot of good for Superman over saying, you know, you may not like the Snyderverse like we do, or we don't, but Superman's like, I guess was a Q rating, they would say back in the day, has stayed pretty consistent, and he's been in the public's eye a lot more than he has like in the early 2000s. Superman did go away from for 19 years from the movie theaters, and he definitely felt like after Lois and Clark ended, he was just kind of relegated to the backseat for like 10 years, so... Well, I'm yeah, he still too. remains extremely popular. Yeah. Well, he's like the superhero superhero. Everybody knows Superman and can relate to him because I don't mean this as a dig, but he's generic enough to be like have a broad enough appeal. That's kind of where he lives. So mm -hmm. uh, I got to get more. Do I have to get Dion? Should I get more Superman stuff for the shelf or is like a Christopher Reeve figure in a 90s uh, animated series figure enough? You probably get some more. Okay. Yeah, just, that. just, 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 just a few more. Just a few more. Actually, <laughs> is um, there a Zod? Get a Zod. Oh, Zod would be good. Yeah. Or yeah. Amol Muzz. Get Amol Muzz too. <laughs> so, anything else you guys want to say about Superman? I'm interested to see where Batman comes into this, but I'll save that for another time. I, I just hope, like, I, I just hope we're not getting an origin story again. I don't want this. I don't want to see his his parents. The 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 farm, this bullshit. Like, I'm, I'm done with that. Like, you're going, to, you're gonna, you're gonna see the farm because they just cast Jonathan Kent yesterday. Oh, we don't need that. It's the same thing with Batman. We don't need to see the Waynes get shot in the alley. No, yeah, hold we, on, though. It done. doesn't. <clears throat> There's a lot of Superman where his parents aren't dead. Like in comic books and on Lois and Clark, his parents are alive. So that's that could be no, a no, situation no, where they're just like he's current day Superman. And he'll fly back to see him because that's see, that's okay then. Does. I mean, yeah, if he's, yeah, if he's, yeah, if, he, if he's, if he, you know, if he saves some broad and then he's, you know, flying, flying, flying home, you know, he can go get, he can go get the milk, you know, for, for yeah. mom, whatever. That's fine. That's fine. But like, don't make it, don't make it the thing where like, you know, the, we, we see crypt, we, we see Krypton, the, 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 the thing with the baby and all this other stuff. Like, no, we don't need that. What if they do that, but they bring back an AI euthanized version of uh, Marlon Brando to do it? <laughs> oh, man. Euthanized Marlon. I'd be okay with euthanized Marlon Brando. Yeah, you know what I, you know what I think would be iron out the wrinkles, you know. <laughs> yeah, bring him back, do another Godfather prequel, you know, before yeah. the Godfather, the before uncle. the Godfather. <laughs> That's I what Godfather Two I, was. Well, before the Godfather, Godfather. I don't know. Oh, like it's okay. one of those like in between sequels. Godfather where it takes Inception. Place. <laughs> yeah, it's about them ordering the catering for the wedding in the beginning of the movie. How's that? <laughs> oh, okay, Does so it's sound, a, it's a prequel, enough? but not too far before the beginning story so it's like we don't have to redo godfather 2 where it bounces back and forth no. we can just do godfather but like a week before the there wedding of his daughter there you go there you works. like we'll we'll get to the guy it'll start with the guy asking don vito's permission to marry his daughter and then it'll build and then we'll do like a time passage and then we'll it, it, there'll be no crime in this movie at all it'll just literally be about a wedding like it'll be like catering and ordering dresses and flowers and shit. It'd be the most boring movie ever made. CGI what? James Conn is there for just some CGI reason James. with a youth and yeah. version of Robert Duvall. God, uh, Pacino. That. But we don't de-age Pacino. He looks the same. <laughs> Dude, that would be awesome because that... So th we, we went ahead and oh, said, we're going to go ahead and dick up the continuity in our own movie by dicking up the continuity in our own movie. See, that? Yes. that's like meta. So that's like really crazy. That's like a Tommy Wiseau move, except for we did it intentionally. <laughs> I'm fed up oh, with man. this. <laughs> I'm fed up with this wedding. Yeah. <laughs> We need him in it. We need him in it. Just, just as like as a one-off character. That's it. We'll just get. We'll get him to. We'll get him to play Fredo. Be like, look, John Caviezel or whatever is dead or Caselli. I can never remember his name. I know who he is. He's a dude from uh, Dog Day Afternoon. Um, he's dead, but so are half the rest of the cast. We'll get them back. We just won't get him because we want to cast Tommy Wiseau as Fredo. Yes. Yeah. I think everyone would accept that <laughs> casting choice. That'd be hilarious. Sign me the fuck up, man. Oh, yeah. Now, it's going to be better than a lot of these remakes and stuff like that. But, you know, adaptations fall in a different window between remakes. You know, when you make uh, another Wizard of Oz, is it really remaking the other one if you 
don't do the Judy Garland movie. No, you're just kind of adapting something else in the world with L. Frank Baum. And so adaptations are fun and adaptations are really fun when they get them right. Now, folks, I'm working on this right now. I am in the middle of watching this between other scheduling stuff. I haven't had time to finish the show, but I'm currently watching Fallout. And I'm not here to talk about how much I love it just yet because I got to watch all of it, but I do enjoy the hell out of it. But it's getting renewed already for a second season. It hasn't even been out a week and we already have confirmation. Have you guys heard about this yet? No. Yeah. No, no, I I I haven't heard about season two yet, but I have heard a lot of hype about the show. It, it is really good. It's fun. It's bloody. It's got great everything, really. That, see, I do believe we're kind of living in this weird golden era of the video game adaptation. That's the thing right now. We it had is. Mario the movie start out last year. I like Twisted Metal. I like Fallout. That was, like, no, I'm no, loving yeah. these shows. Yeah. Yeah, Twisted Metal was was really good. I was I was I was waiting for the, the other shoe to drop, but it never did. Anthony Mackie was hilarious. Um, it was, I think, I think it was a really fun show, a really fun show all around. Uh, and I, I, I think, I, I think that got renewed for a second season as well. And I can't wait for that to, uh, to show up. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's been a long and arduous road for the, uh, the section of entertainment based on video game adaptation. So, you know, I, I you know, they, Amazon seems to have, you know, done a lot to, uh, to make sure that fallout is good. You know, but, you know, a lot of money had to be left on the table before studios realized to actually give a shit about making the property good as opposed to, hey, here's it in name only. And it's always veering off away from the source material. So it's nice to see, especially Amazon, because, you know, they was they was messing up for a while, but um it's yeah i'm i'm it's it's nice that it's finally here definitely is a is a sweet age to be in um but you know it ain't it ain't been without sacrifice they've their studios have lost a lot of money and looked very silly and of course you know mila jovovich had to kind of get out of here just for the good the good parts (laughs) to come back in oh my god uh and not to mention like the the biggest mess up has been halo like, yeah, you, know, you mess it up in the first episode. Like, how do you mm-hmm. do that? Like, that's a simple, that's a simple thing to do. Just like a, a, a super super soldier in the future killing aliens. Like, that's really easy. It's really easy to do. Come on, I, well, you know that's, so- that's paramount for you. That's paramount for you. They, you know, they are in that same, um, the same. We love the taste of this shotgun barrel mode right now. You know, Disney's slowly trying to come out of this shit. Um, but, you know, for whatever reason, uh, I can't remember the director's name or whatnot, but, you know, they are they want to do this exploration of Chief as a character. And, you know, they they didn't get it. You know, for them, hey, we, he doesn't need to be underneath the helmet and we need to have him in sex scenes and we need to oh, have no. nothing happen. You know, that, you know, Paramount, you know, they, you know, they were doing that with Discovery and, and you know, huge chunks of Picard. They're, they're just not good with original properties right now in general. So, you know, I'm, yeah. I'm not surprised to see the only real video game screw up coming from Paramount. <laughs> yeah, because, I mean, Halo, I mean, that any of us, like, we're, we're fans and any of us could have written that in our, in our sleep. Mm-hmm. In all honesty, it would have been easy. Yeah, and, uh, just said, plus, hey, see this book, Fall of Reach? Adapt this into a screenplay and make it last 10 episodes. Exactly. Yeah, there Run. you go. Yeah. Right. And come up with actual uh, uh, visualizations of the character and stop trying to rely on tropes all the time. Because, you know, I can't stand the dude that plays Master Chief. I can't stand that guy. Yeah, Pablo. Uh, I almost said Pablo, Pablo Escar or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Pablo Sorry, not Pablo you know, Escobar. It, also, that would be a, that would actually be a fairly entertaining take on Master Chief. That'd be hilarious. <laughs> Why are you so fast, Master Chief? I don't know. Get out of my way. It'd be like that's what he knows about JFK. <laughs> oh, oh my god! But you know, don't it's, go there, it's, D, right I'm now, man. It's just, it just, it pays <clears throat> not to fight the fans. It pays not to try. And and Martin Scorsese up a video game property, you know, and stuff like Fallout is proof positive of that. Like you can you can do certain things. You can even experiment with certain ideas with video game movies, but you cannot get away with 
fighting the fans, that whole subverting expectations and, well, this is just how TV shows or movies are made. You have to have these things. It's cost them a lot of money to get over that. It has cost them a lot of money. Um, so, you know, Fallout, and especially with with uh, with Prime, you know, it's it's nice to finally see them have a property that they didn't make where they're not trying to do something else with it. You know, they couldn't, they clearly couldn't figure that out with Lord of the Rings and, and even Wheel of Time, you know, again, they're, you know, trying to do something else with like, just make it based on the property and keep it within that box. This is a good box to be in. It's Fallout. It's one of the most recognizable video game brands on planet Earth. You, you know, it's got a cult following and it has a mainstream following. Just stay in that box. It's okay. Stay oh. in the box. Oh no, they're they're gonna fuck it up. It's gonna happen. Just give it time. <laughs> oh, they will. It's definitely yeah. a possibility. Oh yeah. Hey, it's, look. Like every yeah, just I mean, it's inevitable. I'm wait. I'm waiting for X Men to drop the other shoe. So believe me, I I think I think we've all been scarred enough with a lot of these problems. Yeah, we all have. We all have this this horrible trauma of like, what's it gonna <laughs> happen? Just just do it already. It's like yeah. Groundhog Day, but with fucking movies and TV shows of yeah. our properties we enjoy. It's like, God, <laughs> still keeps waiting worse. They keep doing it again. Yep. Yep. Exactly. So, folks, I will have a Fallout video after I finish the series. I'm going to sit down and do my best to finish it over the weekend. Uh, you know, some of these episodes aren't super short, but, you know, I'd rather have a really good show than something short that I can just talk about quickly. So I want to make sure I cover it all before I try to jump in. But join us next week. We'll have a video of that. Um, guys, any favorite Fallout game before we uh, move on? Mine's three. Yeah, New mine's Vegas. three. Yeah, three wasn't bad. Dude, I played so much of Fallout 3 trying to do everything that that's all I did for like six months. And I got myself so burnt out on Fallout that I didn't try to pick it up again until like 10 years ago. I'm like, man, I'm just, just one of those because I miss New Vegas right away because I'm just like, I can't play Fallout, man. That's all I've done for like six months is play fucking Fallout. And then I tried to play, I played New Vegas and, you know, four. So, all right, I'd play three again if they remastered it and re-released it. I'd fucking be like, all right, let's go. I want to detonate the bomb in that goddamn town. Yeah, I think I think yeah, I think they're, they're doing they're doing they're doing a really re-release of, of one of them. I think for sure, right? I'm pretty sure there is there uh three. No, I mean they put it on PlayStation Four, but I don't know if they remastered it. Yeah, I don't think they remastered it, but um, yeah, no, man, three is three is awesome. I love three. New Vegas is my favorite. I think it's the best one. You easily. got New Vegas when it first came out. I remember Hillary got yep. that as a gift from you, yep. I think. And yep. that was before they patched it. So it had all those glitches. And that game was fucked up at the beginning. And it was hilarious. We used to laugh. We would drink and watch her play as like people would just like yep. fall apart yep. or she would glitch oh, out. It was amazing. Yeah. God, it was so yeah, much yeah. fun back then. <laughs> that was a good time. That was a good time. And, you know, and Hillary's a completionist. So she played it a bunch. And then, you know, I would mess around with it. And then, you know, then I finally played played all the way through it you know so i, I it has especially my place in my heart because of that but yeah new vegas is just it's just awesome it's, it, they definitely let in terms of open world it's like yeah you are the courier son four four was okay it, it was a letdown um it was big there's a lot of shit to, in it but um i liked it it was all right it was all right could have been I, I do enjoy just kind of exploring the wasteland and shooting shit when you do it in slow-mo and their heads explode that's that's what fallout is to me i'm so i am not a violent person in real life almost boring to a fault but in video games i think it's hilarious when she, like people explode because it's not real so it's just oh of course yeah their I mean, eyeballs go that way and their skull <laughs> goes that it, it looks so hokey and i love it that's oh, the man fallout. one of the one of the greatest additions to video games ever man that, that's a very it was a very it was a good it was a good addition it was fun so much you can do with it they even you know the perks for the characters you know have things that go along with that system. You know, if you had the stranger, if you use vets a lot, he'd randomly show up to you and, and attack, attack the, uh, the target or whatnot. And there's lore to that character and all that. So yeah, new Vegas, I think is what the outside the bugs was like the fucking pinnacle of, of fallout. So, I mean, hopefully the next one is good too. There's, you know, already rumors abound of where it's going to be, but um, yeah, man, I, Fallout's good stuff. It's good stuff. Did, did they ever fix Fallout 76 to keep people from like beating the shit out of GameStop? Uh they did, but then no one cared. Oh, okay. <laughs> so 
<laughs> yeah, they always seem to they always seem to, to fix these games like when nobody gives a shit. They're like, oh, it's fixed now. It's like we're we're, we're over it now. We're, we're well, the next you game. know, you gotta remember Bethesda screwed themselves because they promised so much with that game. And then, you know, the trailer was awesome. It, you know, one of the greatest trailers ever released, man, was the 76 trailer. And, you know, but they promised so much. Then, you know, that was the, the pinnacle of pre-order culture. So they offered and promised so much with pre-orders. And so much of it was terrible. And the game was still messed up. So they shot themselves in the foot. So by the time that they did, you know, care enough to fix so much of it, it will, you know, they, they had pissed the fan base so much. They pissed them off so much. So it just, you know, talk about talking about slobbing on that gun barrel until it's too late. And then boom, you're dead. And then boom, <laughs> you're left with 76. I kinda <laughs> I kinda want I kinda want Jeff to make a morbid shirt of like Mickey Mouse, like like with his mouth on a gun barrel. Steamboat Willie with his mouth on the gun barrel. There we go. Don't there we go. Steamboat man. Willie. Steamboat <laughs> Willie. Yeah. I'm just saying, like. I feel like some people would buy that and just just proudly wear it. Oh, I'm sure they would. Eternals was good. Eternals was good. <laughs> That's what he'll say. Eternals was good. <laughs> yeah, man. Like people defending that shit on the internet is just always so funny to me. Like that I didn't is, think it was that dude, bad. That is... Then they gave a specific reason as to what to not like, and they're like, "Yeah, that was pretty dumb." <laughs> no, like, I, yeah, okay. I, I no, I really, I really do love when people when people try to like say the movie was you know was good. Like, come on, man, come on. Yeah. No, it was fucking it was trash. Good. Like, just accept it. We paid way it. It too much bad. to watch it. We did. Yep. Marvel uh, was okay. they they wanted that Oscar so bad that they made a terrible movie, and apparently Camille Nanjabi was was depressed about it. <laughs> he still talks about it with his therapist. It comes up every comes up every like three months. He's like, listen, it's, I've had I've had a panic attack, and he talk about this again. Yo, well, I, I just remember. Listen. Yeah. It, that movie's so bad, but it, I just have so many awesome, hilarious memories of it that I don't want it to go away because because it, it was just so bad. But like, like we were on we're on our show, and like, do you know what this is about? Like, yeah, we know what the Returnals are about, but like, they're really pushing this one, and they were just so certain, like going out to L.A. to see U.J. and fucking just so many billboards of the Eternals. They thought it was going to change the world. It was so awful. Oh, that was so funny. That was so funny. It good times. Folks, I'm there's a video of it. You be nostalgic. Look, I'm nostalgic for the trip. We had a great time uh, did, when I was out did. in the land of uh, insanity. But that video, folks, is here on the channel. So if you would like to watch us post Eternals, the it's like it was I like remember, a walk of I, shame. I distinctly, I distinctly remember I think I think me and me me and Dion took some California shots and tried to ride the mummy a couple of times. Yeah. 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 I and did that too. That was the most like it was it it yeah. So it was, shots where I wanted to ride again. Yep. <laughs> we kept we kept riding a couple times. It was fun. That oh, was man. the best. And I mean the best ride at Universal. That thing was fucking awesome, man. It would shoot yeah. off. Yep. Oh god, dude. Yeah. Did you shoot definitely. off? <laughs> that in Jurassic Park. <laughs> I loved. Yeah, you got me. You got me. Uh folks. I don't want to give you a specific date yet because I don't have it, but over the summer, I will be doing some morning streams every once in a while. You may know the title, but I am going to do some of them from our local theme park. I have a pass this year, so uh, you might get Jeff in the morning from a local theme park. And I live in a city where the theme our local theme park is actually one of the nation's best. So we have everything there. Um, I can't really ride rides with a camera on, so sorry, we can't make that happen. But we can take the train. Go pro. Listen, water park. listen, listen, Jeff, with enough duct tape, all right, things can happen, all right? Dude, get a GoPro Anything and strap that some bitch on. Like a porn star right here? Uh, yeah. <laughs> like a 69er miner? There we go. Oh, my God. Just don't do a Chuck Berry. Just don't, don't oh, 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 I can't play guitar, Dion. Don't worry. I ain't that kind of guy. <laughs> no, baby, you got in your mouth. <laughs> Kiss me, Kiss oh, me, oh, like, oh, like that, like, like that, Chuck Berry. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> better than Chuck Tingle. Yeah, just know that it's not raining, it's Chuck Berry. Oh, <sighs> okay. <laughs> Go go, <laughs> but but yeah, but Jeff, we should uh, Jeff, we should we, we should do one uh, from, from from Dollywood or something uh, during the summer. <laughs> Absolutely, I'll come down for that. I mean, yeah, man. WCVS, we, the W stands for World, folks. We're going yeah. everywhere because I know, yeah, because yeah, Dollywood's like right right between us, man. We can we can meet in the middle. It's fine. 
at, at a point in time, I'd have liked to meet in the middle of Dolly Parton, but that, <laughs> not, that topic, she's a classy lady. We're not going to go there. So fair let's enough, talk about enough. the lady on screen. So uh, <laughs> the lady on screen that you see before you is Molly Ringwald. Now, she was the it girl for an entire generation of people. If we're having to explain who Molly Ringwald is to you, we're old. And it was before we were bo I was born. So this is before my yeah. time. <clears throat> But Molly Ringwald is in the press as of yesterday because she calls her films really very white and any remake would have to be diverse. So Molly Ringwald was on a podcast the other day talking about The Breakfast Club and 16 Candles. And she said, we need more diversity if they were remade. They don't really represent what it is to be a teenager in school in America today. And the first thing I thought was, I disagree, Molly Ringwald, because while The Breakfast Club is a bunch of white kids, I resonate with the entire story because I'm not stupid. I think what Molly Ringwald should have said before any of that stuff is today's kids don't watch stuff that is old because they think it's old. And it doesn't matter how diverse or not diverse it is. It's old and therefore they don't have the attention span for it. Kendo, can you not confirm this? Uh, as somebody that is regularly, you know, associating with the Utes of America, because that's what I get paid to do, I can tell you that if it happened before about 2012, they have no frame of reference to it. Hmm. The fact that I have kids that re regularly refer to things that happened in the 1900s as referring to things that happened in the 1990s and making me want to smack them, I can tell you that anything <laughs> that's old is considered garbage and not good and whatever because they are the their pop culture is the epitome of pop culture even though their pop culture is just ripoffs of our pop culture so yeah oh god and they they, they really have none because it, it it lasts like seconds and then just fucking vaporized well yeah. also to, to, folks to you, folks invest save um make sure you get a good retirement plan because uh this this generation is not going to be able to support you <laughs> WCS is not a financial podcast. <laughs> In that Nor instance, we... yes, yes, that is me giving financial advice. Do you you want your retirement to be in your hands? Not in the youth of America's hands when they get to be thirties and forties and stuff like that, and are running things. <laughs> so oh I, I I just saw this and I kind of rolled my eyes and I <clears> thought, oh great, but I. I really dislike when people think that old movies are unrelatable for silly reasons because those movies represent when they're made, which is important because people need a frame of reference. Kendo, thank you for saying what you said. If they don't have a frame of reference for the last 12 years, it doesn't, it doesn't if it didn't happen in the last 12 years, they don't care. That's no. a problem. You know, you need to know how things were because you have a bunch of ignorant people that look at their phone all day and they just don't know how things were. And then when they get into certain spaces, it like, things slow down because we have to slow it down for the people who didn't do the homework. And, you know, you people deserve to miss out on the breakfast club or 16 candles or these really good movies. Cause I do stand by those as being really good movies, especially the breakfast club being great. I just, you don't, you'll, you'll miss out on the, the interesting characters and the humanity and the things that make everybody relatable. And why, and you'll un, and you, like the breakfast club helps you understand people better. There are these modern movies that are focused on diversity. Don't like, I haven't seen one of these crappy movies that these people want to promote online and go, oh, man, I get this type of person better. But when you watch The Breakfast Club, you get a guy like Bender. You understand that sometimes the bully has a shit life at home and this and that. And it it makes it, it you just understand the characters and the people that they represent. It sucks that people well, miss out on that. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I, I, I would always suggest to actually watch the movie for sure. You know, I, at the same time, you know, I think the, the point being missed out on by Molly and a lot of people, too, is, you know, this is the same thing that happened with Tropic Thunder, right? Like a lot of people. And it sucks that the, one of the stars of the movie is has either forgotten or is ignoring the point of the movie. But, you know, it's it's John Hughes. So, you know, that's why it's important to watch the movie. John Hughes, you know, everyone hears the name. like, Oh, he's just a great movie, movie uh, uh, director and writer and all that. But that was kind of the point of the Breakfast Club, right? Like those movies. Now, some of them are obviously a little bit more silly and they're in the 80s. And, you know, sometimes, you know, studios thought a bunch of white kids sold movies. You know, you know what I'm saying? It was the 80s. But at the same time, movies like The Breakfast Club, specifically, that was the point he was trying to convey. Where, you know, it's a suburban 
setting in Chicago, right? So in that area in general, you're not going to have a lot of people of color and all that stuff. So, and it's the point saying, hey, here's this picture perfect idea of what kids in high school are supposed to be. And here are their problems that they're experiencing. And that was what was so awesome about the movie is even as, you know, a chocolate good looking kid, I watched The Breakfast Club and you first see the movie and it looks silly because it's all, it's a bunch of white kids. And then you watch the movie and you're like, damn, like that's, that's pretty heavy, man. You know, that's an interesting thing. You know, you, you watch the movie, especially where it's like, yo, how are you going to do your homework with no lights? You know, that's a line that I heard as a kid that I remember in my mid thirties. Right. So, you know, that was the point. And it's just disheartening that she clearly has forgotten, you know, and John Hughes has been, has been passed on for a little while now. So, you know, he can't re-explain his point, but you know, that you have to watch the movie. I understand the concern about kids and their attention span. I understand, you know, people that, you know, it's, it's, it's just a different time now. I get that, but that was the point, Molly. That was the point. That's what makes the movie so compelling and that's okay. It's an older movie. It's from a different time, but it's, it's still interesting as an adult to look back and be like, man, you know, even good looking white kids got problems too. You know what I'm saying? Like, and that's, that's okay. That's okay. Yeah, Dion, I mean, did you ever tape a guy's butt cheeks together? Ugh. Emilio Estevez? I did not. That's my only issue is that there are some weird shit like, like all right, John, he's, you know, I'm glad that you're not great at writing bullies. Because <laughs> that's just weird. Come on, man. Yeah, Robert Downey Jr. was a great bully in your dad. science. <laughs> yeah, him and his friend were, were great bullies. That's true. That's true. But, what were you um, saying now, Nick? I didn't mean to cut you off. Sorry, man. That's fine. I was like, even Anthony Michael Hall's character, um, Brian, he's seen as like the um the smart academic kid, and you see that he's going to like he's going to self delete. Let's say for YouTube, and Thank the you. way and 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 the way and the way you find out he's going to use a, a flare gun, and the uh, John uh, Judd Nelson's character laughs at him. Everybody laughs at him. It's like that's not going to work. You're an idiot. And what does he know? Even though he's this academically smart kid who's like on his way mm -hmm. to college and has no friends, he's like the nerd. He can't even like do the, he, he can't do that thing correctly, which he shouldn't, but he can't even do that correctly. But he's, but he's found, but even at the end of the movie, all these people who are different find camaraderie in the fact that they're all in this, in fucking high school, in this shitty place together for a little bit longer than they get to get the hell out. You know, that's kind of what their, what their bonding is. They do it so right. well on screen. By the way, Dion, Man, that movie was written in a weekend, so hmm. uh, that's why some of it's done. You know, <laughs> maybe the bully in that one's a little. Actually, I, I love John Bender. I think the best character might be uh, the the principal, aka Dwayne T. Robinson from Die Hard. You mess with the bull, you get the horns. I fucking oh love God, him. Dude. He's great. I don't know. The, yep. the janitor was really good too. Like, there's 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 almost no love for the yeah. janitor. Well, you know, and again, like, you know, and, and I think that's the disconnect is just like, yes, we could have the conversation about how the, you know, certain movies weren't diverse 30, 40 years ago, but like, it's just a different time. And it's okay that that was different in that time, right? Because you get, you know, who knows, you know, you, you know, you, you, everybody wants to pretend like, you know, we're, you know, family ties up in this mug, but, you know, <laughs> if, if the movie's any different, are we going to get, a, a character in the janitor who's like, yo, I know all your secrets. I know all the stuff you guys throw away, notes, pictures, whatever. So you need to cool it. Like that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a growing up moment. That's just that's a special part of the breakfast club. So, you know, it's just kind of like, you know, is that, is that something that you can convey today? You know, probably not. Not a lot of filmmakers today, despite the 20 million records that they want to break every opening weekend have the ability to convey to convey conflicting characters like that, you know. So we, we you know, they they weren't sure as so I weren't able to do it in a wrinkle in time. So you know, it's, <laughs> it's you know, I, I just hate that argument. It's like, don't lose sight of what the movie was trying to convey. It's just like well, the blackface bit in, in Tropic Thunder. Like that's the point of the movie. Well, the the thing about the wrinkle in time, Dion, that you're forgetting is it's not made for people. Like me, so I don't. You never mind. You, you are he allowed almost, to criticize. He almost it. self realization. Yeah. So never mind. You are allowed to criticize it. I'm not. I forgot. He almost. I just, he almost well, fucked up just a little bit. I'm just. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. When you make movies like that, they kind of come off disjointed as hell. 
Mm-hmm. What? And why is Oprah here? You mean Wrinkle mm-hmm. Time wasn't wasn't a good movie? Come on. Shit. Yeah, no, it's not it was a funny saying that. Film. The money lost is saying that. The funniest thing was that I, I I got dragged to it when it came out with my mom, my aunt, and my niece. All three of them hated it. <laughs> they were allowed to. I'm the only one that's not allowed to dislike it because it wasn't made for me. <laughs> It came from your ex-wife herself. <laughs> yeah, you needed hey. to like do something no, about she, that. She was she was saying that about. Uh... I don't know. Give me give give, give me a pillow. Well, I'll get this problem. I'll get the problem cleared out right fucking now. Well, he, right easy now. Here. Easy now. Easy. Wait till after the show. I do not want to be a third member in the bedroom. You hear her in this? Yeah, I mean, you know, shoot, we I can tell that you know. She's a little opinionated about some stuff. I can only imagine y'all's conversations, but you know. The allowance is good, though. The allowance is worth it. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. That's my man. That's a smart man right there. He's a businessman. I respect the honesty and the hustle. And thanks for lunch. It was really good. So <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> Now, folks, on screen right here is something we're not super excited about, but we thought we'd tell you about it anyway. Rebel Moon. The movie that was supposedly the next Star Wars that was this game changer that I have never interacted with a single person in real life that has even heard of it. This movie, this epic, is about to get more. According to Zack Snyder, for Rebel Moon, it needs four to six movies. That just is what makes sense to him. So now we're about to get part two, like what, tomorrow or some shit? And there's going to yep. be, you know, a, a two hour or a four hour or an R rated cut or something like that. Like, first off, when I read this article and they're talking about so many different versions of movies. Oh, look, dude. wait, no, actually, Stop. actually, actually, part two came out the 12th. So like, oh, OK. Days ago. Yeah. Well, guess what? I'm I, I forgot. Did you guys yeah, realize yeah, it? That's like, how, yeah, that's how that's how good it is, is that you you forgot. I'm so excited I, I to watch. I thought it was coming out this weekend. Yeah, even D. I was like, I thought it was coming out this weekend. Nope. That's, that's hilarious. How, that's how that's how good Netflix is with their marketing. Like nobody knows when it's coming out. I literally yeah. I've seen the most of the commercials in the, like the last week. I feel like because even when even I think there were a couple like when we were at WrestleMania, there were a couple on uh, like ESPN and shit when we were watching it. But I've seen way more commercials now. I'm just like, wait, it came out. Already? Oh no, sorry. Are wait, sure? hold on. Okay, sure? okay. Google. All right, all right. Sorry, Google's wrong. That's the problem because I typed in literally Rebel Moon Part Two release date. It says April 12, twenty twenty four. Um, I, I, Netflix here says it's coming out tomorrow. So okay, I'm gonna go okay. with Netflix. <laughs> so it is coming out on the nineteenth. Wow. Yeah. I'm. I, I'm That's so, hilarious. I'm so excited, guys. <laughs> yeah, that's how. See, even the you internet itself, <laughs> even the internet itself, doesn't know when it's coming out. That's how. That's how fucking good it is. Like you know, hey, whew, man. Hey, Dion, if I had a dollar for every hour I spent watching Zack Snyder's Rebel Moon, I wouldn't have anything because I didn't watch it. I talked about the trailer. <laughs> I didn't tell anybody we were gonna watch it. Look, folks, good man. There's a line, and on this side of it is insanity. And for me to watch Zack Snyder's Rebel Moon willingly without any kind of alcohol makes me cross that line and i can't come back and you won't like me once i cross that line so i did it for all of us uh, you you really don't want you really don't want to get jeff angry you won't like him when he's angry no <laughs> that's pretty funny it, i've seen it like twice in my life it's not fun <laughs> i don't i tend not to get that angry i'm a pretty chill guy i'm happy exactly you know, that's good. why that's why i've only seen it in the, in the in like the 10 or 10 or 12 years i've known you it's only happened like twice yeah well uh that's good i don't want to sound like a threatening person <laughs> cool you know i'm not that angry uh but i i will tell you this though Zack snyder does not need more of this rebel moon universe Zack snyder doesn't need any more stuff i think what he needs is a little less press if he's got his fan base out there awesome more power to him but i'm also a fan of film and every time i watch a Zack snyder film i feel a little dumber so i have to skip on rebel moon if i want star wars i'll just watch star wars if i want dune i'll just watch dune if i want a man with deer horns on his head i will watch anything else because that sounds fucking stupid but i won't be watching rebel moon tomorrow and i'll make you a five dollar bet kendo's not watching it tomorrow either correct i am not all right so uh folks tomorrow on facebook do us all a favor mark yourself to safe check or sorry excuse me do yourself a favor tomorrow folks Mark yourself safe 
from Zack Snyder's Rebel Moon 2 because that that's the only way we can all do this together. <laughs> Solidarity. Yeah. Oh god. If somebody if somebody can make that Facebook like Mark safe from this that then this like tag isn't it we we'll share it please. We great. have a lot of listeners out there. Folks, do us a favor. Can somebody make that and make it look just like the real one? Today I was marked safe from watching Zack Snyder's Rebel Moon. Let's get that yeah. made and let's get that trending on Twitter. Uh that'll be meme of the week. Uh, you know, you'll become listener of the week as well. So all you got to do, folks, become listener of the week is get our attention in a positive way, and you can be listener of the week. Uh, we had some great listeners of the week over on the High Council. The WCBS show needs one, so folks, do your worst. So, guys, let's check in with the audience because we have a lot of wonderful people who are patient, and then let's start talking about some of our other stuff. So, uh, our friend Shrubbles08 says, I'll take a Joe Rogan motorcycle and a message, please. Well, ask if you shall receive here on the channel. Let me get you queued up. And uh, we might have to do them a little out of order, but that eh, doesn't matter. Message! 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 Did you see that guy accidentally hit that moose with his car? No. Holy shit. Jamie, pull that video up. Oh my God, oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> Thank you, Shrubbles08. <laughs> Thank you to our friend Sejorjan or Cesario Japan as he's gifted a membership to the WCBS audience. So, folks, give your thanks to Sejorjan. Uh, hit that one in the chat. Let's see a tank tread of ones to show some love to our uh, new member. And, or, sorry, we're gifting the membership. Excuse me. And uh, let's make that happen, folks. Let's see that tank tread of ones. So Georgian, <coughs> excuse me, also says the Tyson Paul fight is one of those rare cases where both sides of the spectrum are in unanimous agreement that Jake Paul needs to lose the fight. That's an understatement, yeah, buddy. Yeah, there's definitely a spectrum. There's definitely a spectrum involved with that fight for sure. Dude, even the kids at school want to see Mike Tyson kill Jake Paul. I was surprised. I figured they were going to be like, "Oh my god, Jake Paul's so cool," but no, they fucking hate him too. So it's like, wow, shit. Now, okay. when your when your core audience hates you, you have a fucking problem. Yeah. Now, will will Logan Paul's prime sponsor this fight where there'll be a prime um, bottle icon in the ring? Because I would love it if Mike Tyson punches him so hard that he never gets back up and you just watch his prone body on the ground right over the prime logo. I think that'd create a great visual image of like why <laughs> you don't <laughs> fuck with Mike Tyson. Create an cr incredible meme that will stand the test of time too with a crumpled yeah. Jake Paul yeah. laying in the middle of the ring on, on top of a prime logo. Jeff, I, I have I have a mission and you have to accept it. If 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 that does happen and he is in some sort of weird position on the prime logo and he's like let's say knocked out, you must draw it and make a t-shirt of it immediately and put it on the uh, put it on our website immediately. I feel like that's something I should do before the event. That should be our or fight do that shirt. too. Yeah, do that too. That's fine as well. Yeah, and then if that does happen, you can turn the punch that knocks him out into a fucking button with Smokey screaming at him. But I got knocked the fuck out. So. <laughs> <laughs> all right so folks uh, but jake next paul losing this fight creates content for our channel that's true that's true <laughs> now folks tomorrow or sorry by next week's show we'll have our at least the official jake paul fight shirt for wcbs design oh, we we're go. gonna make there this happen go. and then we'll get that uh out to you and we'll promote the hell of it over all of our social media and what we ask is that you wear it along with us we'll have it on in the fight um maybe oh, we'll damn, have like man. our suit a suit jacket in your jake paul fight shirt <laughs> <laughs> i'll tell you what there i'll do i'll no no i'll wear i'll wear the shirt with with my vest over it i'll do that i'll do that there you go <laughs> and just a floating bow tie that'll look cool there we go that's fine that works that works i got a bow tie somewhere i can i can pull it yeah. perfect i got and a top hat you can borrow would we get sued if we took the picture of mike tyson for mike tyson's punch out and put it on the <laughs> shirt too or do you think nintendo would come out <laughs> Yeah. If we do it, no, because no, Nintendo, no, Nintendo wiped him out of the game and replaced him with Mr. Dream. Officially, Mike Tyson's punch out doesn't exist. It's just punch outs featuring Mr. Dream. So Nintendo okay. has no leg to stand on. There you they, go. They, they, they you got get, they, Jake they Paul real... dead on it with Mike Tyson's picture up here like a like a chest patch. <laughs> I don't know. Do Nintendo Nintendo does get real anal about their about their properties. I mean, that's why they own like what one or two like Nintendo pornos. <laughs> yeah, the, the Nintendo porno. I've never watched it. I've seen clips of it in a YouTube video, Super Horneo Brothers, but it's it's like a bucket list thing at this point. <laughs> I wonder how that would compare to the one porno uh, bat pussy, the the one that we <laughs> we I reviewed. Them, like, we have to, yeah, that we reviewed. I'm like, we have to. This is supposedly the worst porn ever filmed, <laughs> and it's a woman pretending to be Batman riding around on a hippity hop. So we gotta yeah. watch this shit. 
It was bad, folks. It was as bad as you expected because while she looked okay, the other two people that were the stars of this film were people you do not want to see with clothes on, let alone without clothes on. So, yeah. Steve Buscemi would have been an upgrade. Just yeah. Up. <laughs> Sorry, Steve. Sorry. So, um, Another one comes in from our friend Breadman Productions. Thank you. He says, Dion, I read Dark Knight Metal recently. Crazy story. Wish there was more lore to evil Batman. Is that another comic? Did you guys read Doomsday Clock? Dion. Yes. Uh, yes to all of those things. Um, Doomsday Clock. I wasn't a huge fan of Doomsday Clock, but I, I mean, I liked it. Wasn't a huge fan, but you know, it, I, I, it was nice to have another <laughs> comic event to be, to, uh, you know, as it was released. Uh, what was it 2017 or something like that? So it was, yeah, I do like, I do like, I'll say that. Uh, but yeah, there is more lore on the uh, evil Batman and Dark Knight Metal. There's one, I actually bought it a couple weeks ago. There's essentially, uh, you know, uh, uh, not prequel, but you know, one of those um, complimentary storylines where it's literally the background of every, it's of all the Batman. So um, that's that, and it's actually really freaking cool. And then there's one other thing, um, uh, the Batman who laughs and a bunch of stuff now because he's part of DC proper. There was, you know, the return of the Batman who laughs. So he has been a recurring character. I don't believe there have been any of the other Batman around, but um, I will actually, I'm going to take a screenshot of that and look up the name of the uh, the evil Batman complimentary storyline and and make sure that we get that back to you because it is it, that is awesome i mean and for, just for the record merciless the batman who was in love with wonder woman and aries kills her he goes out gets revenge kills aries takes his helmet and becomes merciless that's my favorite batman from batman metal so i'm gonna get it to you baby i got i got you Dion, uncle, uncle dion has got you I'm going to watch that video as well, or at least get the information from me, because I started reading reading Dark Knight's Metal whenever it came out, and I also started to read Doomsday Clock, but I stopped reading Doomsday Clock, but I'll finish it one day. Uh, I'm interested. It's all right. It's all right. Dude, you know what book is more than all right, and I've gone back to read them, is the Jim Steranko Nick Fury Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. run from, or Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. from, it's like 1966. Man, is that like a it sucks that Jim Steranko couldn't do more comics. He's done a lot, but never enough. He's also the uh, the guy that created Indiana Jones design. So if anybody was like, who designed Indiana Jones? The same guy that was drawing comic books for Marvel. So Jim Steranko's the name. Um, What was it? The comics that I think me and Kendo and you raved about, the Ghostbusters ones that were kind of the prequels? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Those, those were good. good. I, w I wish we could get a continuation of those. That one was a really good, uh, I think, four, four, uh, four book arc that oh, yeah, really we enjoyed. That huh we did that one i remember that now i remember making yeah, yeah, the video yeah. actually yeah 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 because that like that one was a lot of fun i wish i had, i wish i'd kind of followed that out but they didn't so that sucks oh um, our friend sejorgian sends in a uh, member message for 14 months thank you sejorgian he says wang has a video about the super hornio brothers movie parody i recently got revived in a compilation of internet mysteries he covered it on his channel also ron jeremy is reportedly not well liked outside of certain circles not surprised on that one yeah. yeah well i subscribe to wang so i will have to watch his video because <laughs> i do subscribe to huang <laughs> <laughs> i think his name is like justin wang or huang uh good 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 youtuber i've been following him for years so nice. uh nice. definitely like him shrubbles 08 says i'll take a new buffalo jeff button and a horses for dion green well, folks, if you really, really love Buffalo Jeff and you really love to torture our old pal, the one, the only Mr. Dion Green here on the show, well, then do us a favor. After tonight's show or during, because you probably can, head on over to shopwcbs.com, scroll right down here and get yourself one of the Buffalo Jeff's or Skin Ranch shirts. Sorry, Buffalo Jeff's, Jeff's Skin Suit Ranch, all for Dion. And if you wow. really want to troll Dion, we have it available in green. The only shirt we have in green, I believe. So uh, from our sizes go from small to four extra tall. We got something for everybody. So if you have a torso and you need to be covered this summer, well, then make sure you're covered in Buffalo Jeff's skin suit, the T-shirt, because mm. there's only one skin suit of Dion in it. Now it belongs to somebody He's a else. Lost it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Not for long, pal. Oh, easy. <laughs> Put the lotion back in the basket. 
<laughs> there is no basket, Dion. <laughs> <laughs> but let's hit those buttons and, and then we'll start to those off. He's always watching Dion. He's like the eyes of the ranger, <laughs> except you know, <laughs> weird. Anyway, here's your first button that you requested right here. Who's that Pokemon? It's me, your old pal Buffalo Jeff. Oh, he died. <laughs> back, Walk away, bitch. <laughs> trying to worry this time anyway uh dion's flesh tuxedo is what the chat's talking about a little creepy oh my god dion please don't wear that to the uh jake paul funeral because <laughs> i don't really want that to happen the flesh tuxedo. i'll get on that thank you sir <laughs> so the opposite of getting on is getting off, and you can take it the dirty way because we always do. We don't kink shame unless that's your kinky sick freak. But maybe Aaron Rodgers should get off of uh, some of the shit he's on lately. So have you guys been hearing what Justin, or sorry, not Justin, Aaron Rodgers has uh, been saying that's gone viral lately? Yep. No, not <laughs> recently. I've been kind of out of the loop the last couple of days on AA and Ron Rodgers. Well, according to an article that dropped yesterday, the 17th, New York Jets quarterback Aaron Rodgers went viral on Tuesday over a video in which he appeared to suggest that the U.S. government engaged in corruption while combating. Basically, he blamed the government for creating HIV AIDS. So mm, that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, they, I mean, they're, they're, they're not that trustworthy. They've, they've done some they've done some shit. They've done some shit. Yeah. But so, here's the thing. They're really bad at covering true. shit up. That's one hundred percent true. One hundred percent. They've true. done some shit, but are they falling down the rabbit hole with your boy Alex Jones and Aaron Rodgers? Crazy. Eh -huh. Somebody to microwave their noodles a couple too many times. <laughs> That's a good. You know what? I really fucking like that because that can be taken so many ways. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I like the that. noodle analogy is one of my favorites. Yeah, that's a good one. Metaphor like as well. <laughs> so I, I, I just wanted to hear what you guys had to say, because this isn't the first time Aaron Rodgers has been in the news this year. Like, So it was last season that he took one step and tore his leg, a uh, quad, Correct. right? That was what happened? Uh, or was ACL? Achilles. Achilles. Achilles, excuse me. So Aaron Rodgers yeah. was injured after his first play. And so I thought, oh, man, well, maybe he'll come back next season. But he has never really left because he keeps saying crazy shit. What was some of the other stuff? I'll look it up right now, but do you guys remember some of the other crap he was like bl on blast for saying earlier in the year? Because it was something yeah, well, else was crazy, had, right? Yeah, well, he had been saying some wild stuff, you know, and just, just for the full context, right? Aaron Rodgers has always been suspected of being a weird dude. Uh, yeah. And just like a lot of us uh, citizens of planet Earth, COVID was like being shaken. And not everybody recovered from that. And Aaron Rodgers, very clearly, he went off the deep end during COVID, you know, years ago uh, during uh, quarantine. He, it was very, very public how he didn't want to take the vaccine, how he refused to take the vaccine. You know, he had lied about it uh, when he reported to training camp, I think. <clears throat> and then he was very adamant about it. Then, you know, him and Joe Rogan were buddy, buddy. Um, and then he unironically kept using the same phrase, you know, do your own research. Then he was parroting a lot of stuff. And then a story came out last summer, I believe, or at the end of 2023, where uh, a news reporter had been at the Kentucky Derby, I believe, and she had a conversation with Aaron Rodgers. And the conversation was supposed to be kind of, you know, off the cuff. They were just at this uh, Kentucky Derby party. And they got in the conversation, and he was going on about how Sandy Hook was an inside job, that those were yeah. crisis actors. He's, you know, he's a 9 11 truther, and he had kind of went off the rails um, on all of this while he was at this party talking to this reporter at the Kentucky Derby. So, 
Uh, and then he, there was one other thing. Oh, he, you know, he went on some other podcast and he was basically just repeating the whole, you know, I do my own research. My buddy Joe Rogan sent me stuff. And then he got really close with a guy by the name of Eddie Bravo, who was a very close friend of Joe Rogan. Uh, he is one oh, of God. the greatest jujitsu minds on planet Earth right now. And he is well known in the Bro Jogan verse as being a wackadoodle. And he is, I mean, Eddie Bravo is a wackadoodle. He, and then there's another guy, Eddie Redband. Um, all kind of outside of the Joe Rogan universe, and they're one. They're they're two of those conspiracy guys. They do tours together where they go to, you know, they go to. They can't get because they're supposed to be stand up comedians. They can't get gigs at uh, venues that don't that don't like conspiracy theorists. So they do a lot of those shows, and Aaron Rodgers started talking to those guys. So, and they were all like a lot of those people. All riled up in COVID, and Aaron has still not come down. Yeah, he's also a 9-11 conspiracy theorist, which is also extremely ironic since he was involved in a tragic jet-related thing involving September 11th in the city of New York as well, not too long ago. Jeff had alluded to it. Oh, so. The universe has a sense of humor. Yeah. So. <laughs> Snap. Yeah. He, he went from a guy that was probably just like this cool dude to just like a fucking nut bar. Did he? Does, <laughs> does he? Yeah. I mean, and this is a legitimate question, kind of being funny as well. Does he have CTE? Does he? Has he had one too many concussions? Probably. You yeah, know, I mean, I'm probably sure there's some of that. You know. So that's like, the that's the other context of that, right? So Aaron Rodgers is one of these dudes that they were playing football their whole life, and his family are very, very, very religious, and he's been playing football since he was like eight, you know, and then obviously oh, wow. being okay. the starting quarterback for the Green Bay Packers isn't very good for your mental health in general. Yep. And there were many hits within the last seven years where Aaron got shellacked. I mean, the fa the famous one is when I think it was Anthony Barr from the Vikings smoked him and he was laying on the ground like yeah. this because he was jacked up. So, I, you know, even, even half-heartedly, CTE definitely has a – Part to play in Mr. Aaron Super Bowl aluminum foil tin hat Rogers. He, he's also <laughs> very much into therapeutics and alternative medicines, including psychedelics. So I think yep. that might have uh, something to do with uh, some of his. Uh, and you know, that was the other thing that he was going to do that four day isolation camp yep. before training camp in 2023. And he could only last like eight hours. <laughs> Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, Which I, I thought was the most Green Bay Packer thing ever. Like, I'm gonna do this thing. No, I'm not. <laughs> uh, so yeah, well, it, I mean, was, it, it was. Yeah, and, and if you said if, if you said he's been like he's been rocked and he's had a, he's a concussion a couple times. I, I I have no once again, not a fucking doctor, but I I, I would think mixing psychedelics and, and brain injuries is probably not a good idea. Well, I mean, listen, Dion and I could yeah. go even further down the rabbit hole and say this all started at the draft in 2005. God, when yeah. his psyche got punched really hard in the groin. And then the whole time that he was in Green Bay, he was, you know, the underling to Brett Favre, and he was just waiting for the yeah. old man to get out of town. And then there was nothing but constant comparisons to him and Favre. And even towards the end, Favre kept playing that game of will he, won't he? Is he going to retire? Is he not going to retire? And then he forced his way out of town to go to the Jets. And then Rodgers is in the same boat not too long, too far after that. Is the is he, isn't he, will he, won't he retire? And then he fucking goes to the New York Jets. So he spent his whole, he spent the first few years of his career trying to get out of the shadow of Brett Favre only to emulate him. So, although so far we don't have any confirmation on his photography and sending it to people that don't want it. Oh, uh, yeah. Because, yeah, Brett Favre was Before that he well. stole from poor people in his home. Yes. Place. Before he stole no, a bunch yes, of welfare in the state too. of Mississippi. Yeah. He stole from the state of Mississippi to build his daughter a tennis court or something, I think is what it was. And listen, okay. and, 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 as, and as the resident, probably coolest sport fans you guys know, Kendo and I, you know, make no mistake, we're not taking any side. It's just utterly hilarious that he literally did the same thing that Brett Favre did. And it's yep. just oh, no, no, no. I know I I, 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 it. it's I so, they're both and, crazy dudes, crazy no. like quarterbacks with a green Jordan Love. Get your shit together, son. Yeah, because I promise you, if, if you get down the road, Kendo and I are gonna laugh at you. Yeah, we're gonna be like, dude, this is the same shit that's been happening for the last 40 years <laughs> with Green Bay Packer quarterbacks. 
Oh God, I don't know. I oh, and and also the, the statement that Dion made at the beginning. I wonder, one hundred percent endorse that. You guys are the coolest uh, sports guys I know, and you will not take sides because I know you guys. You won't do it. Um, uh-uh. I love yeah. you too. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's why that, that that's why I trust your judgment, especially with, with with shit like this. Because like, yeah, I I I'm not a sports guy. I know very little. So yeah. Yeah. Well, if you could just learn just... set a fantasy football lineup, you'd be doing a lot better. I know. <laughs> Oh yeah, I, I want to give that. If I would, shot, if I, I would fucking remember to do that. that, I just still... the number of times I had to go in and fucking use GM powers to fucking fix your guys' lineup and then dipshit Pete's lineup because he forgot how to log into the goddamn thing. So like, then Loudy who gave up after week one, I'm like fixing four people's lineups a week. I'm like, God, I have enough trouble dealing with my own damn lineup. I don't need to juggle yours, <laughs> but I did it fair and I didn't screw anybody over. So. And and we appreciate you. We appreciate That's you. why I was awarded Commissioner of the Year by the uh, the league. There you go. You've also been named Commissioner of WCBS, so don't abuse your power, Kendo. But you got a little say. So yeah, what are you going to do now, Lawman? Yeah, I'll be I'll be uh, like Funny Jack Tunney back in the old days of WWE. That's your new nickname. You're Funny Jack Tunney on the show. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to our friends over at the uh, Old School Wrestling Podcast. Dion, Dion, you're <laughs> muted, buddy. You're muted, Dion. We can't hear you. Can't hear you. My, I was messing with my there microphone. He is. There it is. Well, yeah. you're making some joke, and I'm He's like, I bet that was funny, but you shouldn't. You shouldn't be playing with that stuff on on the air, okay? It's, you're, everybody can see you, all right? That's Put your true. Balls all right, man. I get, I get my balls in my hand. You know, <laughs> shit happens when you're playing with your balls. I have just just to re, just to bounce off of that joke with the previous joke. I have a hell of a lot more faith in you than I do Jack fucking Tony. I promise you that. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not planning on holding that. up anybody's titles as vacant, so we got that going. <laughs> the man has started it all for vacant. Mm-hmm. Well, good for him, man. But he's the greatest champion of all time. Third round picks in our draft, and I'm really, ex- I'm way more excited about it than I should be. It's like I pretty much got away with highway robbery in our league. Yeah, there was some. <laughs> Not real bright people trading with you. Like whenever my nephew like send me things, is this a good trade? I'm like, no. <laughs> like it might be for the person that's offered you that trade. I almost got Justin Jefferson. If I could have just gotten Nick to okay that trade, but he never did. <laughs> yeah, Nick, you fucking ruined it for everybody, man. This could have been a hell of a season for Dion, but yourself. Look, just don't let this tear the channel apart, guys. Okay, next season, we'll do it again. We might even put money on it. Who knows? But let's not let it ruin our friendships. Football, fair, fantasy fair football enough. cannot fair tear enough. us apart. Yeah, real football is going to do a good enough job of trying to do that shit. We might as well not get know, fantasy right? involved. Yeah, with Nick being Golden such a age, baby. fan. Oh, jeez. The Lions and the Bengals are good. Golden age. They really are. It's awesome. <laughs> yeah, and the Falcons, if that's who Nick is going to pick, they seem to have gotten their shit together this offseason, too. God. It's All right, still Kendo. Falcons, you got a lot to keep. You got I don't know, man. Do you, you, do you remember, do you remember the Super Bowl that happened with them? Yeah, I know. I was very upset, although I had bet yeah. on the yeah. three. Patriots that, to win. Dude, that, like, just, I remember being in a bar when that happened, and, I, and like, I audibly laughed my ass off, and everybody else is like, fuck you. I'm just like, hey, listen, whatever. Falcons fans deserve so much better. <laughs> we do. Yeah. We do. Us, you guys us, have been hurt. Us, so us, 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 us and you guys in the Lion fans, we we deserve fucking better. Okay, we deserve. Better. Listen, listen. I listen. I agree. Listen, you guys made a Super Bowl. You made two of them. Y'all good. My and I love Matt Ryan, so I, I'm on your side. But damn, <laughs> they just keep fucking that fan base over. <laughs> yeah, they do. Yeah, they do. <sighs> Well, boys, since we're going to talk about sports tonight, let's talk about what's on screen right now. I was today years old when I learned that the Olympics will feature breakdancing. Did you guys know that's going to be a thing in a couple of weeks? <laughs> yep. Wait, that's a sport? Yep. Yeah, breakdancing yep. is now an Olympic sport. So another sport that the U.S. lobbied to get in, involved in just so we could continue to shithouse the medal table and keep beating people even worse. That's You know, I support it. <laughs> you know the u.s isn't gonna get gold it's gonna be like china korea argentina that's the that's gonna be your top three right here we invented break dancing we will not win the gold we will not even place in break dancing now listen listen listen, listen just, 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 just find, just, break listen, just Japan, find some I'm kid good. just find some kid in brooklyn who's really good at it and, and and draft him in it's fine it'll be okay it'll be all right that's pretty much why yeah <laughs> Get some That's kid from Brooklyn or Detroit or freaking 
yeah. LA. This yeah. is team. This is Team USA. Go get us a gold, son. So this is officially from Forbes. Breaking, not break dancing, will be featured in the Paris Olympics this August with B boy men's and B girl women's solo events. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so people are uh, Forbes is trying to take the uh, approach. Everyone thinks it's electric googaloo and all this shit, but apparently break dancing is a worldwide phenomenon that you know. This doesn't seem like a stupid idea, right? This is great. This is, you know, the future. Break dancing is an odd sport. So, 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 so is roller derby, but you don't see that in the fucking Olympics. Uh, you joke. You should. I, We'd win well, that I mean, one. I mean, in all honesty, in all honesty, I think it'd be fun to go watch go watch some some females roller derby. Uh, that, that'd be that'd be a good afternoon. Hey, do you want to do that when you come to town? Uh, yes. 100 percent let's let, let's make that a fucking video so yeah jeff, okay jeff and you go to the roller derby <laughs> i'm looking at the olympics and i love all the little logos they have for the sports and everything like that for breaking it is a picture of a dude like upside down with his hand down like holding himself up with one hand essentially he looks like the if you've seen the episode of south park the you got you know served episode the you got effed in the yeah. a he looks like the dude from like Compton that was doing the break dancing that shook Randy as hard as he could when he was fucking just hopping up and down on one hand. So I'm sold. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I wasn't uh, gonna cover the Olympics this year because you know a few years ago they had the uh skateboarding, and I thought that was cool. Tony Hawk was out there. I was like, all right, skateboarding, I get. I will watch Olympic break dancing. Maybe we'll even report on Olympic break dancing. Maybe we should do commentary for Olympic break dancing, guys. Do you want to make that like a short? <laughs> I just we want to hear Dion and yeah. So here you go. Um, the um, breaking at the uh, 33rd Olympiad this summer will take place at the Place de la Concorde. Ha ha ha, baguette. And um, <laughs> It'll take place on the 9th and 10th of August. There will be two events with 32 competitors, uh, boys and girls. And, um, yeah, it's it doesn't say there, – there's actually been a qualification to get into this. So a total of 32 break dancers, 16 per gender, but I thought genders didn't count anymore, will compete. And um, there were, apparently there was world championships of break dancing that took place in 2023 in Belgium, of all places. Oh, <laughs> and um yeah there was, there was dancing in europe so here's the qualificational breakdown <clears throat> of some of the people that have gotten in there's been there's one man and one woman from australia that made it um a man from canada went woman from china one each of from france a man from japan a woman from lithuania so, cool um, About there's damn that time. a man and a woman both from morocco a woman from the Netherlands and the United States got one man and one woman. Yes. <laughs> what do they look like? Does it tell you? Um, well, the, the okay. So M Victor Montal Montalvo, he is 29 from Orlando, Florida. He is the male, uh, the uh, U.S. representative. He took gold in the, the 2023 World Championships. Good. He also uh, got a gold in the 2022 Birmingham World Games. I'm assuming that's probably Birmingham. No, that is Birmingham in the United States. Go figure. Um, I figured it was the one in England. And uh, he's a two-time uh, Red Bull BC1 champion. So he's the first American to qualify for the Olympics in the sport of breaking. Um, the woman from the United States is Sunny Choi, also known as Grace Choi. And she's an American break dancer who took silver at the Birmingham Games and gold at the Pan American Games. And that's how she was able to qualify. She's from Cookville, Tennessee, but by ways of Queens, New York. There you go. That's what I wanted Makes to say. Makes sense. <laughs> so yeah, there are still for... nine, nine qualifiers that need to come for the breaking which that's in four months, so they might want to get on the ball and you know get these people qualified, so we can see. Well, I did. I did. The Olympics. I, I did find uh, Sunny Cho's Instagram, and like the, the all all the top ones are just her her dancing for sure. Yes, so, I, I feel like that goes with artistic swimming. 
You know, not <laughs> not people trying to swim real fast or dive off of the diving board and make a little sploosh in the water or, you know, Greg Luganis type shit, not the diving part of it. And um, <laughs> where they just – they get on there and they just swim around in a circle and they try to prance around in the water and look all like whatever. That's – I just – that to me, I, I don't know. That's not really a sport. I don't get it. I mean, I'm sure there's people that are into it, but that feels like that was something that was made up for people that couldn't swim real good or real fast. And they're like, we need to make an event for these folks. Fucking synchronized swimming. <sighs> Weirdos. <laughs> Sorry, dude. That Greg Luganis comment broke me. <laughs> so as per usual, my prediction for the Summer Olympics, not that you asked for it, but I'll give it anyway. Um, what's going to happen is the Olympics are going to start off in China and, you know, those countries will do OK at the events that we don't give a shit about, like Taekwondo. And then when the track and field events start up where the Americans usually kick the shit out of everybody, that's when we'll take over and win the Olympics. Like we should, America. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Well, winning honest, Olympics we and world wars. We need to stop playing the national anthem on the podium and play America, fuck yeah, because then the crowd starts going, fuck yeah, with us. It's like a thing. We can really yeah, ruin I'm the Olympics. Soul. That's the I'm wrestling fan. Man. Bro, no, that's the idiocracy <laughs> fan in me. I want Beef Supreme to be up there on the podium, you know man. <laughs> Listen, I would 100% be like, hey, can we play America, fuck yeah, that I've won the gold, please? If you could just do that. And that would be the most, in terms of branding, hey, you remember when Jeffrey Hicks out of Cincinnati, Ohio, played Amer America, Team America, fuck yeah, when he won the gold in Smash Bros or whatever it was. That was awesome. <laughs> yeah, because I'm going to say, I'm not going to compete in the Olympics. I'm 35. I'm a little too old for that one. Maybe if there's like an <laughs> Olympic video game playing, uh, then we'll get into that one. Oh, God. Uh, have, you, have, 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 have you heard about, have you heard about uh, what is it, the Olympic... Um... The thing, like, they're basically they're basically gonna have condoms everywhere for the for the people who are involved. Oh, in the Olympic, Olympic Village. Because, yeah, Olympic yeah. Village. Yeah, I hear about that. Because apparently, apparently, all the people are very athletic and they and they love to fuck. Yeah, of course. Listen, it helps you relax. Can you imagine you're in your physical prime, you're in shape, you're looking good, and here are two hundred and some motherfuckers from the same country you are, and then you're lit, sitting next to a couple thousand other. Athletes all in shape, looking good. I mean, I can't say I blame them. <laughs> right. Give me a box. Give me a. Give I'd me be, one of the box with thirty. Yeah, we'd all be doing it too. I'll take a so gross. It yeah. Listen. Hundred percent. I ain't mad. Yeah. Well, apparently there have been problems with like I guess STDs or something or whatever, and they're just like, listen, wrap your shit up. Oh my God! Could you imagine our Olympic break dancer need... goes? We're like, how did you do? Did you get the gold? No, but I got the clap. Yeah. <laughs> That's an Olympic Olympic story. Story. Like, man, at fucking the twenty twenty four Olympics. It's a new variant that breaks it's out. A new variant, yes. <laughs> That's what happens. That's too close to uh, real life. I'm gonna stop. Well, I know. I know. About that one. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's just a shame, you know. Like the Olympics, we got surfing and break dancing, but they they don't have baseball anymore. It's like, God damn you. That's they got rid of the baseball. Yeah, yeah, they got rid of. They don't have baseball. wrestling too. I think. Yeah. Well, folks, I do love the Olympics. I will watch them because they're on Peacock. So yep. maybe I'll do if I'm up at like two in the morning and they're playing something. I might be like a late night Olympic stream where I'm just like watching the Olympics and we talk about. Shit I like will like fucking join you because I do. I too That's also fine, fucking man. love the Olympics. I love all of and I love watching them. I become like a sports fan for the Olympics. I don't know why. Like every year, it's, I, it's, it's, it's interesting to watch. That's why it's just it's just fun to see the competition and like how and especially if they're doing like you know something speed or time based. You're like, how close can they get? Like, what's what's the difference? Oh, yeah, it's yeah. it's always sports exciting. You don't care about every, until every four years. Like track and yep. field, yep. I might give a crap about if like you know like MSU's track and field team does something. But other than that, I don't watch track and field. You know, sprinting. You know, if a big name is there during the summer, I might watch. But every four years, bro, I I love watching the track and field section of the Olympics. I don't give a damn about the 1,500 meter, the, the, the 500 meter swimming. But every four years, fucking let's go, Michael Phelps. Let's bring home a yeah. gold, baby. Yeah, yeah. I'll know? watch, like, the medal events and things like that. Yeah. Like, same thing with, like, the winter games. I'll watch, like, bobsled because yep. that shit looks cool as hell. 
I oh, always no. watch the hockey because that's my jam. But like speed skating, I'm like, I don't care about the qualifying rounds. I want to watch the medal rounds. I want to watch people, preferably the United States, win shit. And, oh, yeah. you know, Summer Olympics the same way. I used to watch the baseball. Apparently I can't anymore. Uh, but I'll watch the football. Um, I'm going to watch the break dancing just because I have to fucking see what this looks like. Oh, yeah. Um, when I was a kid, I used to like watching the gymnastics, but not the dudes. <laughs> and then as an adult, I don't watch it anymore because that's creepy. Um, <laughs> but, you know, volleyball, dude, like the last Olympics that happened, the one that got postponed a year, like I moved out here and the Olympics were on and volleyball was a thing. And volleyball is really big in a certain Asian community that I'm now adjacent to. So we watched a whole lot of volleyball <laughs> um, and not just the beach variety, the regular one. And uh, I'll watch that. Like, oh, the Top Gun variety. Got it. Yeah, the Top Gun variety. Hey, Olympic beach volleyball is fun to watch. Ooh. Team volleyball is fun. You know, a lot of the, uh, especially for certain sports that, again, don't have um, well-watched championship tournaments. You know, the Olympics, they bring their A game, man. That, that, you know, for the Winter Olympics, I love watching the half pipe. That's my favorite event oh, man, of the Olympics. Shit. You know, I was, a, I was a big Sean White guy when he was in his prime. You know, I would occasionally watch some shit that he did. Outside Why didn't of the Olympics. you tell me this? Because we've been friends for 15 years, 16 almost. And like, I've loved snowboarding the entire time. And we've never talked about that until right now. My bad, man. I, I, it just never came up. God you know? damn right, your bad. Man, that's another thing we could have bonded over. We could have talked about shit. I could have brought up the GameCube. We could have played SSX Tricky. We could have. Oh had my a god, SSX. Fuck yes. And we can't <laughs> slam it next time. Let's, <laughs> let's play it when we go. Well, well, listen, to the we, Hill and I were watching. We were watching. You know, 2014. I think it was 2014 when you know Sean gets to the gold for the qualifying round, or no, he got to the gold to the uh, medal round. And he messed up. And then we got to wait four years. He comes back, wins a gold medal, and drops the mic and walks away. Like, that was a crazy thing. You know, Hillary and I were sitting – everybody, you know, D2 was asleep and stuff. And we were up late watching the half pipe for, for the Winter Olympics in Sochi. So, yeah, man, I'm, I, it just never came up. Now we have another thing to, to bond over. It's great. <laughs> Snowboarding, man. I love extreme sports in general. That was my Dream. shit. I I couldn't skateboard oh as a kid, so I became like the best Tony Hawk player. There you go. I lived the digital dream as a child. Well, I plus, I think the X Games are gonna. I think they're gonna be on ESPN Plus this year. I know they're usually Ooh. on. Uh, they're usually on Fox. I think they're gonna be on ESPN this. Year. I gotta look it up. So if they are, because I have ESPN Plus, man, we might we might have to do something with that. That'd be fun. Oh my god, stream oh. commentary, late night uh, skateboarding commentary with <laughs> That'd Jeff be and great, Dion. Dude. Dude, it's like, it, man. I just had an idea. We got to get green screen so that way when we do cover the Olympics, we can post up behind us and have like the Eiffel Tower behind us and be like, "We're live here in Paris with oh, with Gila Douche here at the, the Olympics." Olympics. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're covering <laughs> Rugby Sevens tournament today. Zimbabwe <laughs> versus some other country. Zimbabwe. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. It's all right. The Olympics, great time. As always, for America to dunk on all those poor countries. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. Oh, man. Something sprinting now that Usain Bolt is done. Well, real quick, guys, I found out that, you know, StreamYards has the chroma key feature built in. So I do have a green screen. We'll start doing some cool stuff for when we, uh, you know, Go to the Olympics. I was just trying to see if something would like pop up on this right now. Oh, oh, it worked. It, are you seeing it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You got a break. Oh, what is it? A, a a brick thing or whatever? Yeah, that's there's a living room in my hand. Yeah, there we go. Nice. Was that like a Wait. little mini green screen? Yeah. Hold on. A well, it's it's. Yeah. I think it's in his package. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh man. This is what I get with our backgrounds. We have yeah. an interior apartment. New York, Upper West Side. All, all, all the issues solved by a green screen and some creativity. Hell, they can always fix it in post. That's right. Nick, there we go. you know what to do. Uh, fucking you. <laughs> um, that is actually a nice background for that. <laughs> it is. That's actually pretty sweet. That's actually pretty sweet. The 30, the 30 year old in me actually likes that. <laughs> it's yeah, that lawyer seems very quaint and very important. Yeah. 
Oh my god, this is cool. We're gonna have way too much fun with this on the show now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> be able to travel oh, all over this the is a, place. I'm trying to have. This is a bad idea. Yeah. No, yeah, this is an is. awesome oh, idea. Hold on a second. Keep talking. I'm gonna un. Oh god. No, <laughs> he's got to okay. undo it. He's got to undo it. If we it don't have a great if, for background for green screen, that's what I was about to say. Considering what the next topic apparently is going to be, he better have a background of him sitting at the fucking Red Lobster. <laughs> okay, he might. He might. We'll see. We'll see. But it's the part. It's the seat. The background is when you're seating next to this, like the salad bar area. Yeah. Or right next to the lobby with the uh, with the fish tank in the background. Oh mm -hmm. Be like, I want that lobster. Make him hiss. <laughs> Every Red Lobster looked the same, and. If that's not the back next coming background, I'm 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 going. I'm going to protest. Yeah, we'll just have to quit and protest for the rest of the show. Yep. <laughs> WCPS, give us a union. <laughs> <laughs> we want Red Lobster. Give us a union. Fucking one day, Jeff sends out the link and says, "Nope, we ain't doing it, man. We unionized. We unionized. <laughs> yeah. Ain't enough employees, mother." <laughs> Be like the three of you unionized, huh? Yep. We're not going on until we have a have a collective bargaining agreement in hand. <laughs> <laughs> Which includes proper green screen backgrounds. Correct. <laughs> Ones that fit the motif of what's going on. There we go. Yep. Yep. That's my that's in my conversation package. Is I get a deluxe uh green screen background. <laughs> I think that's what he's trying to do right now, in all honesty. I think he's trying to Yeah, I think he took it out of the bag and he's setting it up. <laughs> he's setting it up I, right I now. Wouldn't, I wouldn't. Really, really quickly. Just as fast as he can. Shit, can shit. Me. Oh, we can see him man. right now. He's like oh. mouthing the word stall at us and then calling us yeah. motherfuckers for doing a bad yeah. job at stalling. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, I go away for three seconds and you guys end up just fucking talking in circles and unionizing. <laughs> That's what uh, happens. We're when you sorry, let, Andrew. When you're, Andrew when, when you let the leave the colors yeah. with the one educated white guy, they always yeah. turn into a union. From now on, dude, WCBS right. is a closed shop. Oh my god! <laughs> Just take pieces of paper and put it in front of each camera. We want yeah. a union and yeah, a proper college. green screen. No union, no work. God, yeah. the and, and the one educated white guy. I fucking love that. That's hilarious. We stand together. Yeah. Oh God! We're gonna create the brotherhood of podcasters. Local, oh, that's one. right. That's right. Northwestern University can get it done. Damn it, so can we. There you go. We want an NIL program. Yeah, <laughs> Mister Vanishing is wanting to know what would happen. Well, we unionized, and yes. uh, this is this is us uh, fighting against the man who just happens to be Jeff at this point, and uh, <laughs> we're demanding some collective bargaining because. Um, We've got demands, and we will not continue to do this show with any, you know, cohesion until he uh, meets those demands. <laughs> yep. So this is, includes this is a package this is us for is, Jeff is, Jeff premium is, backgrounds. You need premium yeah. backgrounds. Trying, try, trying to get this green tree background done in his in his fucking nice uh, nice suit jacket. It's like fuck it. Yeah. And this, this is this is us picketing right now. You know, unfair yep. practices for you know podcasters. We stand these together. Are, yeah. These conditions are terrible. They're unacceptable. Right. I mean, this is, I don't think that this is OSHA compliant. I don't think mm -hmm. so either. I don't, nope. I, I, wouldn't, nope. I wouldn't say so. <laughs> I talked to my lawyer. He said the exact same thing. Yeah. <laughs> I demand that Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and WCBS properly, <laughs> properly pay me for the cost of premium green screen backgrounds. Right, I'm a family man, <laughs> or at least, or at least, or at least a case of beer, you know, every couple of weeks. Yeah, well, yes. So there we go. So we want a case of beer at least once a month. We want a premium green yep. screen background, and mm -hmm. um, well, I'm sure we could come up with some other things, but we will not continue mm -hmm. the show until mm -hmm. that and, happens. Uh, and, and, and a gas card, a gas card. <laughs> well, those so, always come in handy. So <laughs> there we go. See. Oh, there you go. Finally, he's here to fucking negotiate the terms. <laughs> Yeah, yeah the from <laughs> <laughs> it's 
in this little window from Red Lobster. It's there me. <laughs> that was one of our demands, Jeff. So when Dion and oh, I decided I to unionize, I could hear you the whole time. I'm listening. You know, I, lo I'm I the love man now. Tears. Yeah. Well, everybody knows my name, motherfucker. So come on in. Let's get some Cheddar Bay biscuits. <laughs> Not until our demands are met. <laughs> I'm turning off my camera awesome. until my demands are met, God damn it! Yeah, podcasters on strike. Your cheddar right, made so biscuits are not enough. All right, Dion, it's just us. You ready to go to Red Lobster and hear this story? Yes, I do. Let's go. All right, we Let's... can't We can't leave it. He sold us out already? <laughs> yeah, I know. That was fucking you quick. Scam. The show what? must go on. <laughs> No, that was that was that oh was for God. the betterment of the of the of the of our customers. I wasn't yes. selling you out. Oh, they yes. weren't joining well, us either. Us out for nothing. He didn't now, even get you that premium <laughs> green screen. Here's the article right here. So, guys, <laughs> I got some bad news. If you're into overpriced mid-level seafood, Red Lobster is oh considering God. Chapter Eleven bankruptcy after <gasps> their. Losing money. Would you like to guess where their eleven million dollar loss is coming from? I would say endless shrimp. Cheddar, cheddar, bacon bingo! Biscuit. It is endless shrimp, Kendo. Apparently, people ate so much shrimp that it wasn't profitable, and now Red Lobster might go out of business. So the one thing that they can they can put out there to get people into this into the restaurant is the thing that's cutting their own throats. That's kind of sad. Yeah, a little bit. Eh, I mean, you know, they've, they've unfortunately done it to it themselves. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's kind of some bad business practices. It's kind of like how Quiznos fucked themselves over. Uh, yeah. Oh, I had a Quiznos just, on the way back from WrestleMania. Not surprising at all. Yeah. So let's hear more about this, Jeff. What, what They've lost all this money on Endless Shrimp. What are their other issues? <laughs> <laughs> Well, basically, it just it's a record loss of eleven million dollars, and the CFO partly blamed it on the unlimited shrimp because uh, they're they're struggling, they're hurting, they're uh, they have to restructure the debt because they had to get new contracts essentially and high labor costs. So the people of Red Lobster have demanded more money, and now they're going to go out of business. So, guys, if you unionize and demand more bacon, <laughs> I won't be able to get a green screen that's big enough to cover the house. So, you know. <laughs> Let me try something real quick. You look like this Channel 7 WSYM Jeff on location at Big yeah. Burley's Bar and Grill. <laughs> yeah, you need, you need like the lower you need like the lower thirds thing on the, on the bottom. Yeah. Of his yeah, he's, he, he's, out, he, he's out covering college kids watching breakdancing at the Olympics. Yeah. <laughs> the kids are going crazy here, Luann, which like, I can't express enough. This young man here uh, in the booth uh, in the back corner is just delighted. He and his girlfriend are fighting, but they're not fighting about anything in their relationship, Luann. They're fighting about who's going to place first after the first qualifying round. I'm here on location at JoJo's Crab Shack. Back to you in the studio. I love JoJo's Crab Shack, Dion. Thanks. They're a great sponsor for tonight's show, episode 398. <laughs> Channel 8 News. WCBS, Channel 8 News. That's it. That's our, that's our news name. I love it. I love oh it. Oh, my TC. God. You would be you would be surprised how easy it is to with, with just a camera with, with just like, like if I bring a camera out there to Michigan, we could do that real quick. That'd be Very awesome. Quickly. Very quickly. Awesome. <laughs> Damn. Perfect. Love it. And just now, Professor X oh. staring at you. Fucking <laughs> why? <laughs> You're having too much fun with that. You're having way too much fun with that. We can do the weather. See up here on Professor Xavier's <laughs> eyebrow. It's a cold front. <laughs> He's having too much fun with that shit. Sort of yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> be great. holy shit! <laughs> Let me fix well. this real quick. <laughs> we'll holy be shit. right back. Again, so God damn it! All right, let's 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 negotiate our terms this time, boys. Fucking Dion cross right. the picket right. line. Right. It's, it, it's you and no, me, Ken. No, I, 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 I had to stay on the inside. I had to stay on the inside <laughs> to make sure that we had a direct line to the, no, the union no, president. No, Dion. No, Dion. You cross. No, you. no, no, no. I I am the guy that you tell me it's going right to his ears. I'm not giving up. <laughs> 
I, you know, we we are together. That's why I stayed a part of it. I, I hear your concerns. I'm passing them on. You know what I'm saying? So uh, let's, let's let's talk about that, boys. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I'm just kind of disappointed that the fact that Red Lobster might go away. I mean, we don't yeah. go there very often, but it's it's an institution. It is it is funny. It is fun. like I don't remember Red Lobster hasn't been considered like good since the like '99. But yeah. but my mom still loves going to Red Lobster, and I think one time where I was, uh, I think I was pretending that D2 was sick or something. So I took a PTO day and Diane and I went to Red Lobster, which was a good time because it's, you know, very mid seafood. But, you know, since there wasn't a lot going on, the bartender was very attentive. So it was very nice. (laughs) Oh, so you got drunk at Red Lobster with your sister. Okay. Yeah. That sounds like a good time. I wish I was there. It was, listen, you've been there where we just go to some local Lansing when we went to that college bar. (laughs) Or we Barrio, we went there for lunch. For Lion King. Dude, when we went, we went to Barrio and we just kept drinking. Like we had a hundred dollar tab each of us. I was like, Jesus, man, Ooh, how did we? Right. This is the Midwest pricing. I'm used to California, so Jeez, right, yeah. right. Yeah. For a hundred bucks, you can you can get messed up and make some really questionable decisions legally. <laughs> That's yeah, true. that's true. Hey, Nick, I'm making a timestamp of the green screen. Do what you will with this, but you know, it might be fun to just be like, "Hey, here's a short." Jeff finds a green screen. I shit you not. It's hey, Brett, man, we're just... <coughs> yes, the Brett audio Brett listeners have the greatest you. comment. <laughs> He's like the audio listeners are going to be very confused by this. Oh yeah, yeah. Or any or anybody <laughs> that came only, in during that moment. Only. Jeff had his green screen up. And the background was like some shitty bar grill. And you know, that was the inside of a red like lobster. Doing, you found he was doing a local new. What was it? That was a red lobster. You said go inside oh, that was a red lobster. lobster. That was a red lobster. Oh my god! He had a red ar- red lobster corner booth in his background, and he looked like yeah. he was on location covering the le- chapter eleven, and it was funny as shit. And we're also going on strike, which yeah, all of us unionized. are going on strike. No, no, we're no, 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 no. Me and no, no. Me and one Penda were going on strike. You, you crossed. With yeah, Dion crossed the picket yeah, line. Dion crossed the finish line. No, it's okay. We get it. I didn't cross, your family. I, I didn't cross you, the picket you, line. You have your have It's okay. We don't. We don't totally no. kind yeah. of blame. I'm saying communication with the boss. Man. I'm making sure nice. he hears all of our there's, concerns. There's just there's just one problem. I'm striking with you. We're all doing it together. Oh. Yes. Fuck so we're going on Wait, strike on. against our own team or against our own yes! show. Perfect. Unfair labor practices to Down you know, union that. podcasters. Looking for you later. <laughs> Agreed. Right. I'm on. I'm on all of our sides. That should be the name of the episode, just to confuse people. WCBS goes on strike. <laughs> <laughs> That'll probably be the title of an uh, episode on like on like uh, on on Apple Podcasts or something like that, yeah. so we don't mess with you know YouTube. Oh yeah, hey, I like just get, get it going on Twitter. On WCBS strikes against you know make make up some podcast network. Yeah. <laughs> WCBS podcast stri- goes on strike against straw man podcasts. I mean, I, I I look the president of the company and the the head of the union being the same person. What could go wrong? <laughs> <laughs> Those, the, the, those are always successful, right? And apparently oh, Dion's yeah, yeah. our shop steward, so we got that going for us. <laughs> Best interests. Best interests. I trust you, Dion. I believe in Dion Green. Uh, it's going to be a fun election season, folks. By the way, guys, I will send you all green screens, and we will be able to start broadcasting from anywhere we need to now, boys. Oh, good. Once we get those, the strike will be over. So, folks, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> stay tuned for weekly updates as we go on strike with ourselves. Kendo, I'm hiring you, Yui, to fly into the war-torn uh, battleground that is where you live uh, to drop your supplies so you'll get a nice deployment. Is there anything Damn. you want, like some yingling added in there? Dude... Yeah, well, yes, but if if honestly you sent me a message that literally look up and I look up and there's a fucking helicopter that shoves one of those parachute crates out of there, that would make my day. I'd be like, this is the greatest thing that's ever happened in my life. 
I was about to say, it better be more than just your fucking day, because that's going to require a lot of strings to be pulled. So Kendo would be sure like, damn, he committed to the bit. Yeah. <laughs> wow, he all the way for that I'm joke. Even that's awesome. <laughs> well, yes, I have a month it. worth of WMEs in my garage. I'm going <laughs> to eat them. Because it's hilarious. Yeah. Go to work the next day. Everyone's like, dude, you see that helicopter drop that pallet out there with the parachute? Be like, yeah, that was for me. <laughs> I'm apparently kind of a big deal because I went on strike. Yeah. <laughs> we got to get you back, man. Your valuable property. <laughs> property of WCVS. Uh, oh, so shit. I got, uh, let's talk about something that's a little, uh, I won't even call it spicy. It's just interesting to discuss. Let's get this image up on screen. Uh, this could be a little too for Nick since it's a movie you saw it right or you did not see it. Oh, a Civil War. I yeah. I, I I have not seen it yet. I've not seen it. Okay. So, yeah. so I've seen this movie, folks. We're not going to really be talking too much about the movie right now. I would recommend it. It's an uh, it's a stern movie. It's different than what you think. I wouldn't say if you're not that interested based on the trailer. I don't think it's going to change your mind because it's an A24 picture and it's very small. It's a movie that is not this big battle it's about photographers it doesn't even show the president but for 30 seconds in the opening and two minutes at the end it's they don't even tell you how things go down you're you're very much dropped in the middle of this uh what if scenario in the u.s it's very interesting but uh i can definitely see why it would rub some people the wrong way so take that as you will but uh i found it interesting so as this says right here many things are meant to be incendiary about the film but the Hollywood Reporter has revealed that the new ad campaign for the movie has been getting a lot of negative attention online. Civil War has released five new posters that aim to depict haunting situations of American cities in shambles due to the war. However, these posters have been caught out for having something off about them. They were made using AI. The posters in question were posted on the film's Instagram and were some... And some were displayed as prints. A source explained these are AI images inspired by the movie. The entire movie is a big what if. So we wanted to continue that on social. Powerful imagery of iconic landmarks with dystopian realism. And uh, let me actually show some of these right here, folks. So you can get a better picture of uh, what the posters are. And so it goes to continue on. Here they are. So we got uh, Chicago right here. Actually, I've actually parked in here. Uh, <laughs> LA. No, is that Miami? No, I think it's Miami. That looks like LA. It does? I mean, it's an okay, AI well, image. I think I'm sure yeah. certain shit wrong. I got Vegas. The dome finally burnt down, so that mm. was a waste. Here's San Francisco. Ah, Miami. They got us, Nick. They got us right in the heart. They got our city. So, the reason I bring this up is AI is an immensely hot button topic right now. While many wondrous things can be generated by these programs, there are still lies and unsettling uncanny valley effects that have been made. So that's the opinion of the article. I wanted to know how you guys feel because I know I have talked a lot about how I feel about AI and I'm against it in comic books, especially comic books. Like if you're using that, no, 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 no. We don't believe in that. I stand against that. No AI in your comic books. Hire artists. That's what they're there for. Don't cheap out, you know don't do it but anyway uh, i'm very much against ai for a lot of stuff but how do you feel about the situation where this is a very small budget movie and they don't necessarily have the ability to do these things and to gain more attention to their movie they use a very accessible program and they're open about it how do you feel about do you think there's really a justification for backlash in this situation it's weird it's very weird because I know I've, 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 I've been a part of and made a couple of independent films and it's always just like, you're always trying to get as much exposure as you can for this little project you've done with your friends. It's very much a pain and to have, to have a tool like this that you can just make a, a prompt in and get what you want out of it for, for promoting your movie is great because you may not have them. You may not have the money, you may not have money left in the budget to hire an artist, hire a photographer, hire a graphic designer to, to make what you want. But spending some time on a prompt <clears throat> and getting what you need for that will will get you there. Now, I mean, I think it's <clears throat> fine for in, I, personally. I think it's fine for in, independence and people, you know, uh, under a certain budget to do it. It's okay. But when you start getting into like a, like a twenty four and Blumhouse, if they were starting to do it, you start getting into that gray area of like you guys still have Hollywood access to Hollywood money and Hollywood actors in that area. You don't need to to do this. Well, remember, Even, this is a twenty four. 
This is an A twenty four. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 yeah, yeah. I, I know, but still, like their movies have a very certain. They have a very like. They have a very oh, small, I thought you were missing. Okay. Gotcha, yeah, no, no, sorry. no. Because like, yeah, because like Blumhouse A twenty four, like in the middle there, like they, 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 their budgets are very low, but they do very poignant, like good stuff most of the time, anyways. Um, but I, I understand, like they, 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 they have to keep the margins thin so they can make as much money as they can. But it's one of those things where like, they still have access to Hollywood level like money. They don't need to do this. They could have. I'm sure they, they could have asked of their executive producer or somebody to be like, "Hey, can we get some more money for these promotional things?" They could have done that and paid an artist, photographer, whoever to make those things. They could have done that. Um, I'm not a fan of, of, of any bigger studio ha having access to it and using AI either. Like that's that's ridiculous. You have the money, the means, and 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 the and the, the ability to hire people to do these things. You should not do this. This is not how, this is not how this should be done. But hmm. we're in the age now where. Every other week, there's a new AI program, product, acceleration, or something coming out. I even read the, today, um, before the show, Logitech, the the mouse that I use, this one. Yeah. This little button. This little button here. They want to make it to where. Yeah. So you got the same one. The little the little black button there. They want to make it to where that'll be an AI. You press that, it'll give you an AI um, program for a computer, and it'll just you type in what you need, and it'll give you an answer. Mm. No, I like that to reset the wheel. I don't want to accidentally try to, you know, fix my mouse and go, "Hey, here comes my fucking Jarvis display." Like, yeah, that's what's the, that's the I'm going to break like, something if that's the future. Yeah, no, that's um, yeah, that's that's what's happening, man. That's how it's going. I mean, it's it's <clears throat> it is a complicated issue. You know, I, I, I this is this specific situation is a reminder that it's it's there are levels to this right now overall <clears throat> you know the disclaimer being i am a fan i don't have any experience in making film or doing promotional art or being a part of the pre-production post-production during production process you know so for me i'm not an ai fan right you know i'm i'm the i'm the dude who's like you know i like when it's a person creating something you have you're making a film you're making an experience you're telling the story you want it to be relatable. And one of the easiest ways of making something relatable is to make it visually appealing. And you pay good money <clears throat> to good artists to make that material for you, you know? But again, I'm a fan, you know? And as Nick mentioned earlier, you know, yeah, A24 is a big studio, you know, but studios set certain budgets. And some studios, you know, whether it's good, bad, or indifferent, you know, some studios for certain projects don't want to allocate a certain amount of money to to sadly to shit that includes artists and especially with the the fucking horizon of ai you know a lot of people who want to save money see it as an easy way to do something you know and you know i'm definitely against it you know but you know the the, the closer we get to the future this is stuff like this is what we're gonna have to contend with man and i think for this specifically when you're making a movie that is supposed to be somewhat topical that's a a in this case a very um relevant subject despite how unlikely it is right now where we are at making a movie about a civil war and putting some money into it you would think that you would want the art to reflect what the movie is so for me overall that's a very elongated way of saying i just pay the artist in this case you're making a movie based on this. You doing AI stuff is is pretty indicative of just how silly the content is. But pay the artist. Pay an artist. Just 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 pay an artist. I I don't disagree. I'm an artist myself. There's there's a lot of people out there, but uh, I don't I don't think it hurts this movie though. And uh, our friend in the chat, Wanderer, says, based on the trailer I saw, I kind of felt honey dicked by Civil War. Good word right there. Because mm -hmm. I was expecting a war movie, not a journalist movie, but I didn't dislike it. It was very artsy, very, very much one of those movies. Um, and yeah, I can understand it because I, too, thought it was going to be a little more action packed. But again, I wasn't disappointed in the slightest bit. I actually enjoyed the movie. I, I was just in the mood for like a lot of. Like a, I was just in the mood for a war movie. I was like, cool, bring it on, man. You know, I could just go for that. I should have watched Apocalypse Now at home. But my right. point is, uh, it was it was just uh, the story of Kirsten Dunst in a generational passing of the torch. And it, 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 it's a it's a it's a stream it at home movie. Like, like that's my recommend. OK, like, 
stream it at home like as soon as it hits theaters because I saw it in IMAX just because the guys wanted to see it in IMAX and it was loud, but it really wasn't anything that was so incredible that I had to like go, wow, man, IMAX was the way to see it. It just, it was just fucking really loud. That's all. Dude, that sniper scene was awesome. Wonder uh, when he's like, "Can you guys shut the fuck up?" I laughed so hard. It, it's a, oh, it, it's got a lot of humor too. Okay. By the way, um, articles that came out uh, Monday saying that it topped it topped the box office for the weekend. Like it did more than it was it was uh, projected to do. All right, hold on. Don't tell us the number, everybody except Nick. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me let me let me find the number first. I'm just there. There are like tons of like headlines. Oh, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Look up the number then. Yeah. Give me a second. Let's see here. Oh, you're cool. Uh, Dirk said we needed more Red Dawn and less Wag the Dog. I haven't thought about that movie in forever. Oh my god, oh, Wag man. the Dog! Holy shit, that was popular like for a while. Oh yeah, See, that's the dude, it, it's so funny how many like political dramas we had in the '90s that just are completely forgotten about because the political landscape changes. Those movies have no cachet in the modern age. It's like, oh, here's a quaint re reminder of 1994. Okay. All right. I have I, I have the number for the domestic box okay. office. I, I have it. Okay. And, okay. Whenever you're um, ready, yes. Kendo. So we're just doing domestic. I'm going to say 33 million. Dion. Okay. <sighs> it's mid-April. Domestic. I'm going to say, I'm going to say the 20 million. Uh, Buffalo Jeff. $24 million. All for Dion Green. Okay. Oh. Jeff is closest without going over 24. It was it was actually 30, 32. Mm, yes. Okay. Now, Buffalo Jeff gets to stay over at your place, Dion, for getting that right. I hope you're cool. <laughs> nice. <laughs> he, he needs to know what the toll is, and that's an ass whooping. <laughs> All right, well, he's going to pay the toll to get into your hole, so be prepared. <laughs> oh, boy. oh, my God. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, I mean, they have they have been friends for a while, you know, so. That's true. <laughs> <At this point. laughs> Do it and get it over with. <laughs> now, guys, I don't have a link to send you because I had to use a uh, proxy. Well, actually, no, hold on. We'll tell that story later. Let's talk about boobs. So, Ooh. guys. Yeah, boobs. The word of the day is boobs. Anyway, Sydney Sweeney's in the news right now. Ah, boobs. For yeah, boobs news. So we're all fans of Sydney Sweeney. She's unintentionally hilarious in Madam Web. She's good in what else is she in? That I've seen <laughs> shit. Anyway. Um, her uh, eyes are up there, Jeff. Jesus Christ. Yeah. I can't see anything. I'm looking at a screen that says exclusive. Sydney Sweeney is not pretty and she can't act, declares top Hollywood producer Carol Baum, calling her movie Anyone But You Unwatchable. So get a picture up of Carol Baum and we'll understand why she said that, probably. Yeah, give me you know I'm working on it. I'm working. Oh, actually, actually, you know what? I think I may have one of her. God. Yep, that's right, kind of well, what I expected. Nick, share the screen. I was gonna put her on the green screen, but I, I don't want to do that to myself. You might hurt your eyes. Okay, let's see. Give yeah, it's like the end of Raiders second. of the Lost Ark. That's okay. Everyone's cool with this. Uh, window. Da, da, da. Boom. Done. Got it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that makes sense. There we go. I, There's the difference. There's the difference. I understand taste is subjective, but this lady's really popular. For obvious reasons. And and, right. and yes, she's aware of it too. It's not like she's not in on the joke. That's the thing. That's the beauty of it. If this was a situation where this woman thought everyone liked her because that, no, she knows where she fits into it and she's using it to get real roles and act in real movies and do this stuff because she can act. She's not bad at any of this shit. That's like the joke on us. It's like, oh yeah, everybody likes her because she looks a certain way. Which is yeah, too, that's yeah, yeah. Well, that that's how that's how Hollywood actors have always been. They've always been good fucking looking. These fat fucking people and all the bullshit they want to pass our way for diversity isn't working. I'm sorry, nobody wants that shit. No, it's and here's the thing. I'm all about like everybody that looks anyway being cool and treated right. That's fine, but to act like the beauty standards that like so many people are into are wrong or weird. Like it's it's 
everything changes and evolves. The shit that was popular in the 50s or back in the day or other parts of the world, it doesn't really matter. It Taste changes. We understand that. But this is one of those things where it's like everybody likes specific things. And it's like, oh, you know, everybody seems to like dessert. Everybody likes pizza. Everybody likes, you know, back to the future. This is one of those situations where you really, it feels like you're pulling out of nowhere to pick apart this for very specific reasons and it's obvious and we all just look and go come on lady do better this is kind of lame and sad i mean i think listen I, you know i think for the whole thing people are giving it a little bit too much thought it, you know it's it's you know there's always going to be this weird aversion to um you know attractiveness being part of the business model man and you know don't get me wrong you know her saying that she can't act and she's only getting that role because she's pretty you know i mean like sometimes that's the case you know don't get me no, wrong she, you know, she no can't. she's not she, no she's not saying that she's getting roles because she's pretty she's saying she's ugly and she can't act is what she's saying that's what this lady's saying wait wait who's saying that about who the lady with the, the dark hair says the sydney right. she says sydney sweeney is ugly and cannot act she's not saying she's pretty therefore she gets roles she's saying that she's ugly and cannot act so she's saying she's an ugly woman. That's why I think this is hilarious. It's not about like that. That happens every fucking minute. That's that's part of life. That's not a big deal. This is hilarious though, because this lady is really, really pulling here to be like, oh, oh she's still so ugly. Give me a second. Uh, who I'll is get, she? I'll, 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 I'll get the information. Right. The lady, the lady's saying it. Yes. The lady's saying. It. Yeah. Because uh, it's 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 just you know for overall, it just sounds like. You know, another old person, young at the clouds. I, you know, that you know, it's just like, and, that, and, and again, that goes to show you, especially in Hollywood, a lot of this shit is just is is I don't know. Like that's that's a that's okay. <laughs> like you're calling exactly. her you can't act. Like okay, okay. Like <clears throat> Madam Web wasn't great, but. It was All terrible. Right. I, you you you're personally intent, and that's what's so funny about the whole thing, right? Like you know, especially in in Star Wars and um, you know everything that well, I should say everything that Disney's done over the last five years, right? Like there's always the conversation about you know you shouldn't go after actors for how they look and da 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 da, and 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 you have people they they do it to themselves. Right, you know, they, they get on the fans, it's the fans' fault, and it's always funny when this type of thing happens. And she's ugly and she can't act. Well, you know, why are you taking a shot at her? She was just in Madam Web. What's the what's the you know, damn, you know, oh. it's just a, that's such a whole weird thing. And so it's a very weird thing. I think it's just indicative of society nowadays. Like, you know how it is. We have to like you can't just you can't just make a statement or an opinion. You have to like overly course correct and go to the extreme when you put out stuff. You can't, she couldn't just be like mad that she's an older, bitter woman apparently. And is all pissed off about this blonde with big personality on the screen and you know, all that stuff. She has to go the opposite directions. So it's kind of like, Oh, well, we have to include these people in these movies because they look differently than, you know, what used to be the norm in Hollywood of all the, you know, attractive people. So in order to defend that, you have to go all the way to the other direction and defend it to the hilt as opposed to just if she if she would have just been like, I don't know why people are into her because she really can't act that good. OK, you know, you might get some people listening to your argument, but she had to go the one step further and fucking dig at her looks, which if you were to dig at that lady's look, she'd be like, you can't judge me like that. Like, you just fucking judge somebody else like that. It's old yeah, white. Again, who was it saying it? She's a film producer. Um, hold on. Or let's, I'll get her name for you. Uh, Carly Simon. Just go with that. Yeah, Carl. Uh, no, Carl I like Carly uh, Simon. Car Car Carol Bond okay. is an American film producer best known for her work uh, in Sand Dollar Productions, Dolly Partons TV, and film production companies with Sandy Gallen, Parton's family, former former manager. Well, if she worked with Dolly Parton, maybe that's what her axe is to grind. She's like another blonde with giant personality out on the screen that everybody <laughs> just fucking drools all over. When is somebody going to be interested in somebody that looks like knockoff Rhea Perlman? 
The market slim, but uh, there's somebody out geez. there. Yeah, and like, and like, I'm, I'm, trying, I'm trying to look for, like, I found her Wikipedia, but it's not giving her fucking age or a birth date, so I, I would just say she's old. Ah, yeah. Uh, yeah. What, what was her name again? Uh, Carol Baum, uh, B A B A U M. Yeah, who the fuck was even covering this? Yeah, I don't know who Karen Baum is. It's just such a weird, like, it's just like, you know, you, you know, we're 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 in this post. You know, post Me Too world, and and you know now the what? conversation on the internet is is you know we should be mindful of how we critique actors and what they do. And this random producer who used to work for Dolly Parton is taking shots at <laughs> Sweeney. Like, like, come on! What point? I don't even know what point she's trying to make. Like, she's ugly <laughs> and she can't act. I just think that I was at brunch. Fuck it, and it's like okay, like why are you? This is this young. Well, okay, okay, here's okay, here's here's here's, here's her here, here's her quotes from. Uh, I'm reading it from the Daily Mail. Um, there's an actress who everybody loves, Sydney Sweeney. I don't get, I don't get Sydney Sweeney. I was watching on the plane Sydney Sweeney's movie because I wanted to watch it. She, um, I wanted to know who she is and why everybody's talking about her. Uh, I watched this unwatchable movie. Sorry to people who love this movie. This romantic comedy where they where they hate each other. Uh, referencing producing, the, 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 okay, yeah, that's what it was. Uh, no, nobody had an answer, but uh, but the question was asked: What if we could get your movie made? Because oh, gonna, I think it's something else. No, it's the same. Yeah. Well, the first yeah, thing I would say to that lady: You don't. You're not gonna get why everybody likes her, and that's just kind of how it is. Um, there's a reason why a bunch of people like her, specifically men. You're not gonna understand it. You'll never understand it. It's just one of those things. <laughs> I'm just, sorry, yeah, but if you're just, if you're if you're working in Hollywood and you've produced 30, 34, 34 movies and you don't understand why this particular actress has a is blonde and has a big personality and you don't understand that, I don't know what the fuck to do with you. Maybe you should get better glasses. Yeah, it's it's dude. It just it reminds me of like my grandmother when she would go on these like rants about these things, like with like when Tiger Woods got caught pounding everything that fucking moved. She's like, I don't understand why guys will do that. And I'm and my dad and I both had the same thoughts. You never will. That's the thing. You'll never understand why this happens. And that's that's just kind of one of those things. And fucking Kmart Rhea Perlman over there, you know, she's <laughs> she's not gonna get why people are into C Sydney Sweeney, and she never will. It's just one of those things. You there's certain things that you will not understand in this world. Like, I don't understand irrational decision making or get over hey, the I, I, stuff that don't matter. Listen, listen I, I don't know how magnets work either. Okay. So, it's yeah, fine. it's true. I mean, fuck, they stick to things. You know, it's bizarre. We need to really get our credentials in order because I call you our tech and science guy and you just admit that out loud. Like, we just lost all credibility. <laughs> we were going to be 501c3 certified as an educational tax exempt organization next week nick and you Wait fucking ruined fucking it go, nick <laughs> jesus we, this is why we can't have fucking nice things nick i'm we sorry okay close. i'm sorry fucker. anyway uh let's one last look at sydney sweeney yeah you're you're gonna be sorry there we go sydney sweeney we we like her right knew you. Oh, we hardly knew you. Let's i just, just want to know what is this chick <laughs> Hero bombs <laughs> issue is like, I mean, it, can you it, say it, jealousy? Because, now? Yeah, Dude, no, you, know it it you know what it is. You can, you know what it is. Listen, <laughs> if it came out that you know she was at brunch with her homegirl and someone reported <laughs> on it, I think it's a little different. But I just, I just, it's just so weird to randomly take a shot at somebody who's in their prime right now. Like, listen, I, you know, listen, I don't, listen. I just. Listen, Carol. So far, Carol, it doesn't look like that Carol has um, responded or clarified her comments. You know, she's saying it to this film critic or whatever. But it's like, hey, you know, I, you know, I. If anything, it's proof positive that you know Hollywood is very much as assholeish as the rest of us. So you know, now it's stuff like this. It makes me laugh. Like every time they want to give regular people opinions or insight on how we should live our lives, just remember that you have, you know, longtime producers 
you know, who I'm an older woman and I've been in the business taking shots at the younger generation for for what I can find to be no damn reason. Hey man, hey. that's hey man, that that's feminism. Okay, that's how that shit works. Yeah. <laughs> they they all want to look I'm like that with that, their purple but hair. It's hard to argue, you know what I'm saying? It's hard to argue. <laughs> <laughs> there's even an art, there's even an article that was below that said why Sydney Sweeney and her double D breasts are being hailed as the proof that woke culture is dead. Yeah, that would be see, that's, 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 that's so great. It it gives the other side so like it's just like motherfuckers can't help but be like, man, I'm gonna fuck. This is proof that woke. It's just like, damn, all y'all are whack. You're all whack. <laughs> you're all you're all whack. That's why woke busters is hilarious because you're all whack. Oh, this is proof. You're living, woke is you're, a, like bitch. You're the only one saying that was a problem. You live in 1997, Dion. No, I live in the day, and clearly the life that I'm seeing in the world I'm living in is a hell of a lot different for a lot of these folks on the internet. Buddy, it's the internet. Nothing's real here. I know, right? That's what I'm saying. I just was in Red Lobster five minutes ago, and now I'm here at my True. office. Like nothing's <laughs> real. And now all of a sudden, I'm supposed to to not want to look at Sydney Sweetie. Get the fuck out of here, Carol Baum. You're yeah, a bum. Carol Baum's crazy. Bum. Yeah, Carol Baum's mean a bum. Old, mean old bitch. <laughs> <laughs> now, guys, we love to talk about. Uh, crazy exorbitant things here on world class bullshitters. We're sometimes a pinky out organization. We like a good steak dinner or two. We like the finer things in life that cost money. But sometimes the finer things in life are the most expensive things only. Well, let me rephrase that. Sometimes the shittiest stuff in life is the most expensive stuff. And on screen right here in front of you is Fast X. Guys, it was revealed that this movie cost half a billion dollars to make. Jesus. Like, <laughs> yes. The next yeah. time Welcome any to the future, famous boy. person, any famous person gets on TV with the exception of maybe Sydney Sweeney at this point and tells you <laughs> that you need to donate your money for, for causes that they, they, they tell you that you need to do certain things that you need to change the way you do things. Anytime any of them try to talk to you, like they, they know what time it is on the street where you live. Just remember they spent a half a billion dollars on fast X. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's not conflate things here. Now, no, 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 no. I, I have something even better. I will counter that. Kendo, remember when? Remember when? When the two Hollywood, the two famous Hollywood producers came up with an app called Quibi that they put two billion dollars into, and it fucking went to went nowhere in in eight months. Yep. But we need to donate money to the causes they're telling us to. Instead exactly. of making shitty movies, listen, 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 listen. fucking there help rebuild causes, Hawaii. There are causes that are worth donating to. Don't get me wrong. At the same time, the the biggest issue with this X news is whenever studios complain about the issues with making movies and why making certain movies isn't good and all that, remember this because. This model of spending a bunch of money to make a billion dollars, shit like this is why this is not going to last forever. And um, and again, don't get me wrong, you know, actors and production staff and all that, if they're getting paid, if they like it, I love it. But half a billion dollars to make that movie is they studios don't get to complain about the cost of shit. Because if you're willing to spend half a billion dollars because the numbers tell you that you're going to make a blockbuster, you know, this movie studios get what's coming to them. When 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 the bubble pops, it's going to be because of movies like Fast X. Yeah. Uh, I, oh when, I lived out, when I lived out west, I had somebody that would tell me about a lot about this movie, actually. I got stories to tell you guys. Oh no, yeah, you, yeah, you, yeah, you, you told us, and I'm just like, the fuck are these people like on about it's things just, like... I promised? Things I promised I would never ever tell. Sorry, folks, I did Honey Dicky right there, but I've heard some things that, like, how does this much money get spent? Oh, when you hear that this thing happens, and you go, really, you can lose that much money from that? Yes, you can. So it makes sense if you know how fucked up these movies are behind the scenes. These are not like. These are like Ego, the animated series. Everybody on set. Oh, hold on. We can't upset Vin Diesel. We can't upset The Rock. 
this person's on this team, this person's on that team. It's like high school. Like they, that's why it's so much money because they got to corral people and do dumb shit. But by the way, Fast X worldwide box office, according to the numbers, is seven hundred and fourteen million. Mm. That's it. Yeah. Domestic is even worse. Domestic, domestic, uh, you know, is one forty six. So what you're telling me is we can say that the Fast and Furious franchise has jumped the shark. It's peaked. It's dead. It's no more. It ceases to be. I mean, it's just kind it of on its death spiral. Ago. Yeah, it's been, dude. It's it's been down the that 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 spiral because I don't know. I I guess Vin Diesel has you know has some fucking weird tapes in his closet. That's why he keeps blackmailing people to give him money for these movies or whatever because that's the only way he's getting made. Because they're 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 terrible movies. They're not good at all, but they're still happening, which is just like I don't know. It's idiotic. Though. Certain projects by certain studios, you know, I, I, we've said this since the channel started. You know, they think the audience is dumb, right? So, you know, people who got caught up in the emotional part of Star Wars, you know, they're not. You know, people forget. You know, they can afford to make these movies, right? And they think that if I just spend a bunch of money. And don't put effort into the foundation of a film, I can make a billion dollars. Now, don't get me wrong, it's hilarious that that only made $700 million when it costs in total half a billion dollars to make. The fact that they only made $200 million off of that investment, you know, Universal deserves that. They deserve to take that on the chin because this is not how you make movies. Oh, buddy. You make these sons of bitches. But it's Disney does this. They all do this shit, and they they're gonna when this this bubble is gonna have to pop before they realize that making movies like just because you have The Rock and Vin Diesel and Jason Statham and Tyrese and Ludacris and Jason Momoa does not mean you're gonna make a billion dollars. Oh you have to try to make good shit, and it's it, the, the the bubble is going to pop sooner rather than fucking later. Well, Dion, one thing: it's not a two hundred million dollar profit. It's the budget is 2.5 times the budget of the, that's how you get uh, to break even point. So the budget on this movie right. officially is 500. What does it say? Uh, 563 or whatever. So God, they have to make a billion plus. Was it whatever to break even? This is fucking dead. Right. 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 It's, it's, that's, I mean, I'm assuming that the marketing part is involved in this. I can't imagine that to break even the, the, to break even means that they overall spent a billion dollars to make that movie. I I don't that's that's crazy. I cannot imagine even for movie studios in 20 in the 2020s, I cannot imagine that Universal spent a billion dollars to make that movie because it does not look like a billion dollar movie. So so even if you're saying marketing costs half a billion dollars that's that's impossible i can't believe that it, they must be accounting for marketing i'm i'm assuming overall it costs 20 250 million dollars to make which is crazy in of itself to say out loud but there's no way there's no way that they spent 500 million dollars in marketing that's that's crazy that's crazy i you'd have to be so addicted to cocaine to sign off on it, let alone to come up with that. Where you where you have to make a billion dollars to break even. There's no way they were like, yeah, this movie's gonna make two billion dollars. That I can't believe that. I can't believe that. That's insanity. Yeah, yeah. That's insanity. Well, I, and and oh, once again, and, 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 yeah, and and to talk about another studio, A24 Blumhouse. I you know their movies are like hit or miss for me. But they are doing things very well. For instance, like the, the movie the movie that they did really well in 2022, Everything Everywhere All at Once. The budget yep. for that, according to Wikipedia and their website, is let's see, the budget was between 14.3 and 25 million. The domestic box office was 77 million. The worldwide was mm. 111. Mm. Big profit and, margin. Yeah. They're yeah, and and then and then the other one that the, that's uh, like right under that was um, uncut gems. The budget was nineteen million. It made at the box office. Let me make sure of this before I say anything. Let's see here. Okay, the domestic box office was fifty million. 
Well, it goes that, to show you that the way these to other. Yeah, that's you went to. The, it's like with Joker. Joker cost sixty five million, made one point four billion. Rise of Skywalker cost five hundred and sixty or five hundred and seventy million, made the same as Joker, but it didn't make that much profit. It was a fucking loss. Uh, I have a video coming out yeah. about that, folks, because they are trying yeah. to fudge the numbers, and they're trying to fudge the numbers from Forbes, and they're trying to. We'll put it in the video, but it's funny because they're like, they're. They're lying, and I have proof. So watch me. I will have that video for you guys tomorrow. It'll be fun. We'll have uh, evidence and screenshots. Maybe I'll put on a tie. Ooh. It'll be like we're at court. I'll uh, nice, I'll nice, present nice. the facts. Yeah, even just okay, and, and and just and just and just to kind of nail and put a nail in the coffin here for the third one. That's their highest grossing highest m movie uh, for a twenty four. Lady Bird in 2020, 2017. The domestic. Let's see. The the budget was ten million for that. Ten million one zero. The domestic box office for it was forty eight million. So these companies, yeah. yeah, 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 they're they're hit and miss, and they're putting they're they're putting a lot more value. they and their movies are putting a lot more value into story. They're not really going for the whole fucking diversity bullshit. They're going more about the story, and their movies are fairly good. I mean, for instance, Civil War has done as the Civil War movie did better than their projections for the weekend. Like they're doing. There were a it. lot of people in my theater. Like I was surprised yeah, they people dude, showed up for the early Saturday. Yeah, they're they're doing it as much as you may not like them or whatever, you know, Blumhouse or them. Like they're they're the ones who are doing the math right. It's happening. Oh, the only place they fucked up at Blumhouse is The Exorcist, where they oh, overpaid God, yeah. and then it shit the bed, and now the property's dead. Oh yeah, that oh, rhymed. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean yeah. that's yeah, that's that's the side of you know that's what happens when you miss the mark with those type of movies for sure, and that's. That sucks, right? But it's just I, you know, I just remember a time where budgets ballooning to three figures was a big deal, and now you have studios very openly and very easily having, you know, having fucking hundred million dollar budgets and not even breaking even. You know, that's you know, it's you know, something's got to give, man. Something's got to give, and you would think that seeing things. You know, like Joker would 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 entice you, like, hey, let's just make a good film. If we go into the tens of millions, yeah. If it's good, we're tripling and quadrupling and and multiplying five six times, hopefully. Especially if it's good and it's something people want to see. But you know, hundreds of millions of dollars for budgets where you need a billion dollars to break even is just. It's just crazy, and they 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 can't they can't help it. They just can't no. help it. They cannot. So, anything else you guys want to say about the Fast and Furious before we move on? Good luck. Yes. Yeah, really, man. Movies. Honestly, yeah, honestly, good good luck because I think I th I think we're you know we're, we're gonna see um, Blum and A twenty four really you know really kill it over the next five years for sure. Uh, let's check in with the audience. Our friend Jack White sends in a super chat who says, or that says, new series recommendation, Solo Leveling, Tokyo Revengers, Eden Zero, Four Nights of the Apocalypse, Classroom of the Elite, Mission Yozakura Family. Take in a screenshot. Oh, what did I watch? Oh, Jack, I am looking at, uh, was it Kaiju number eight? I'm going to review that for the channel because maybe it was you. Somebody sent me the book. Or did I read it on Viz Media? Because you guys were like, you need to sign up for Viz Media. So I have the app, and I've read it. I read this manga about like a cooking competition that took place on a boat. So I do like this kind of stuff. It all depends on the story. Dion and I are going to do some uh, reactions or watching of some weird anime. And I don't mean weird as in like adult anime. I just mean like obscure right. or <laughs> random or anything. That can be in there too. Don't oh discredit it, folks. But I'm saying it's like we're not doing like, Late be, night. Be, 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 be prepared for. Be prepared for. Be prepared for a lot of tentacles. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> no. Anyway, Jack, thank you very much. I took your screenshot and I saw that you got some more in a second. So thank you in advance. Overkill one six one. Thank you. He says WCBS green screen is way WCBS can talk smack about other countries. Jeff here in France, where the bread is large and so are the armpit hairs. <laughs> Now, Kendo and Tiananmen Square, where nothing happened since 1989. Nothing at all. No, no. That was just a peaceful protest. Okay, yeah, well, guys. 
<laughs> I, by episode 400. Now, we don't have to do a full episode like this, but within the next two episodes, uh, we're going to get you guys green screens and lights so we can at least, you know, broadcast from the moon from our 400th episode. How's that sound? Works for me. I dig I'm, it. I'm cool with that. I, 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 I can get a moon based background real quick. <laughs> All right, yeah. Cool. Moon Unit Alpha and Moon Unit Zappa will be there. There we go. <laughs> well, you well, funny side thing I read last week: uh, Northrop Grumman and a bunch of other uh, defense contractors have been contracted by the U.S. to build um, a rail system to mine the moon. Oh, we're out of cheese. Okay, cool. Yeah, sure, we'll go with that. <laughs> yeah, I'm. Some shit's going down somewhere. I'm. I'm waiting. It's like. We're just going to watch from the sidelines. Oh, yeah, there it goes. Humanity. Yep. <laughs> yep. Uh, Wanderer, uh, we had talked about the feeling honey dicked by Civil War, but Wanderer, did you notice that shot where both Kirsten Dunst and the younger photographer are, I think it's the sniper scene where they're, photogra- they're uh, photographing the snipers, but they show them through this like blurry, um, it's this really interesting filter where it's there in focus, but the grass is blurry. And then as they, you know, uh, adjust it, the, the grass becomes clear and there's flowers in front of them. And if you look, Kirsten Dunst flower is wilted and the other girls is in bloom. I was like, Oh, that's kind of cool. It's one of those movies, but it's there if you pay attention to it. So yeah, it's a got lot of, a lot, of, a lot got, of subtext, a lot of subtext. Yeah. But it's yeah. got a lot of headshots too. <laughs> it, when it gets, when it gets violent at the end, like, there may not be a lot of war, but it's almost like the most epic like video game parody war you've ever seen. You're like, bring in the tank! The tank's not enough! Bring in the rockets! Oh, shit! And then they just like blow up the fucking thing, and they roll over the gate, and you're like, wow. And then they like, dodge rockets and shit, you're like, okay, this is this now. Okay. Well, as, well as, soon as, as soon as this movie, if, as soon as the movie becomes available, I'll, uh, I'll make sure you guys get a copy as well. Thank you. Yeah, I'll do that. Uh, war because 2, yeah, because if, okay. if you say if you say it's streaming worthy, then you know it's fine. We'll we'll, we'll you know we'll I guess we'll at least have it in our collections. It's fine, uh, folks. Like we always say, as it skip it, stream it, physical media. I say stream it for now. I know it's super early. We usually do that for stuff that's on home video. But since my review in general would say to watch it on streaming because I don't feel it's uh, this big event. And look, I know you want to go support independent art if you want to. That's the one thing. I don't I don't want to take that away because we need smaller things to make the money so the yeah. smaller things can get more eyes. That's unfair to me to say don't pay to see it. Like it is it's like it's worth your money. I'm just trying to be like super reasonable about certain things like it might rub you the wrong way. So if you're willing to spend that money, fine. But if you're willing to take the time to spend it on the movie, maybe you won't be as angry. So who knows? Wartooth88, thank you very much, says, over under on the yellow flush versus Vito the torpedo boxing match next month. My money is on the paramedics. That Star Wars girl and Zia or Zaya are going to be the ring girls. Here we go. What? I haven't heard about a single. I don't yeah. know any of this. <laughs> yeah, I was like, what? Yeah, I don't know I, anything I, about that. Yeah, I was about to say, I was like, I don't know what, what any what any of that is. Well, um, watch. I guess we'll all if it's does a shit mean, show, do we want to do commentary on it? Does he does does he mean does he mean yellow flash? Oh yeah, I think he's just not a fan. That I, I don't know him, so that's yeah, fine. I was like, I, yeah. I mean, maybe there's a parody channel called Yellow Flush and we're just late to the party. Maybe Could be. maybe. There used to be all those parody Jeremy accounts, so who knows? That's true. Jack White, thank you very much again. He sends in two generous super chats. He says, Jeff, I just sent you an email with links to a video. Check it out when you get a chance. And more series recommendations in honor of the word of the day. A date to live, to love, Ru Nisakoi. Uh, all right, well, okay. I always take screenshots of the recommendations. I, I'm afraid of this one, man. I'm just going to be honest. Like, if, if I see some... <laughs> if I, Jeff might go away if he's emotionally or mentally scarred by this anime you send him. So that's a disclaimer. Just putting that out there. I don't know, man. You've, to... you've, you've, you've been to, this, you've been to the, the same, I don't know, 24, 25 years I have. I think you're fine. <laughs> Look, I lived out west through some Yeah, shit. exactly. Exactly. I you lived out, you lived, lived out west for a bit. I think, I think you're going to be fine. There was a time when I was out in the desert. I was like, what the hell am I doing with my life right now? <laughs> it was crazy. <laughs> Were you digging your own grave? Is that what happened? Did you did you get did you get messed up in some stuff that you know you owed some money money to some people? 
no it's not that exciting i just went out to the desert and rented like a like it was a cool ass cabin in the desert okay it like got drunk and hung out in a hot tub and grilled so there you go <laughs> wasn't sober did, at all on that trip did you, did you grill lizards or did you grill actual, actual meat like what what would you do oh we had went to ralph's and like loaded up a cooler full of steak okay. and like all this really it was like really good food too we just were like all right we're gonna be out here let's just keep eating fair enough fair enough <laughs> Uh, Jack White also says, and Kendo, this woman producer and her attitude are exactly what the woman who wrote the book that feminist called the Feminist Bible wanted, and the woman's name is Simone de Beauvier. I and know her. I've heard about, about her. her. Yeah, I know. I, I know about her. Jack says, and a few facts about her. She was a Marxist. She looked like a man. She abused her position as a professor to get her female students to sleep with her, and she had a real thing about wanting the human race to be extinct, hence her push to get women to act more like men. And she was attracted... To uh, she signed a letter, a bunch of French academics that collected on the French government to lower. Oh God. Okay. I'm not going to say that. Ooh, wow. yeah, I don't want to talk about this lady. Yeah, oh boy. Went a little bit down the rabbit hole with that one. But you know oh, what though? Man. Hold on a second. Before we say anything about that, he sent so many, it gets us this. You know, they say all men are created equal, but you look at me and you look at small Joe and you can see that statement is not true. See, normally if you go one-on-one -on -one with another wrestler, you got a 50, 50 chance of winning. But I'm a genetic freak, and I'm not normal. So you got a 25% at best at beating me. And then you add Kurt Angle to the mix, your chances of winning drastically go down. See, the three-way at sacrifice, you got a 33 and a third chance of winning. But I, I got a 66 and two-thirds chance of winning because Kurt Angle knows he can't beat me, and he's not even going to try. So, small Joe, you take your 33 and a third chance, Minus my 25% chance, and you got an eight and a third chance of winning at sacrifice. But then you take my 75% chance of winning, if we used to go one on one, and then add 66 and two thirds percent, I got 141 and two thirds chance of winning at sacrifice. See, Joe, the numbers don't lie, and they spell disaster for you at sacrifice. Jack, thank you for your generosity. And folks, thank Jack for getting the Steiner math button tonight. You know the secret number. Uh, it can be one, or if you're that generous like Jack in a row, well, it still counts. So, Jack, thank you very much. And if folks, <clears throat> since Jack uh, sent in even more, why don't you guys throw a number out at us? And if we get any repeat numbers, we'll press you a couple buttons. So uh, I hope that happens. But, guys. Our friend Sejorjan says, Woodrow Wilson appears on the series 1934 $100,000 gold certificate used internally in the Federal Reserve. A few examples are on public display. Great. They put them on money. Luckily, that's not money we can spend or else I'd be very tempted to never carry those bills. Yeah, I don't think that's a problem we currently have. Oh, I, I, I'm not going to spend my Woodrow Wilson on you. Sorry. You're just not worth breaking the bill. <laughs> right. <laughs> Well, you know what? Dr. Coffin Nails and Clone Geek sent in nine. So uh, here's a button for you guys. What's that smell? Uh, here's one. And uh, this one's for Dion. Kick your ass later. <laughs> And that's how you break the Oh my god. Is he a civilian now? Yeah. <laughs> you know what makes me sad? We talked about the family or so fast and furious and I didn't have do friends. I got family. <laughs> yeah, I've been that one for a while. Oh, or this god. one. But what's real? It's family. 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 I don't have friends. I got yeah. <laughs> another classic yeah, i've never whole... seen an episode of that show but i made that button because i was like Dude, oh wait, that's it's... thing i mean they're, it was they're, good. They're, it was they're, good. they're yeah they're police procedurals like once you watch once you watch about two of them you figure out the the, yeah. the sequence of events and you can figure out who the killer is like in about 15 minutes yeah. you, you, you know the... it was the pinnacle of the police procedural man. oh yeah oh yeah you know what the goddamn problem is, and I've fallen victim to this many a times, is you're at someone's house and they watch Law and Order 
and you keep watching Law and Order because it's this oddly addictive show where it's like, man, I'm really in this case. Mm -hmm. All right, we're going to trial. Episodes over. You're like, what the fuck? You get pissed, and then another one starts, and you start to get invested, and it happens over and over. But I also hate watching Law and Order. But also, why does why 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 do even even current Law and Order episodes? Why do they all look like they were like they were shot in '92? <laughs> That's mm -hmm, the appeal. We're all over. What, what, what so camera formative. are they still using that that, 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 that looks like they're, they've been shot in ninety two? Plus, the good thing about Law and Order is they don't the the good guys don't always win. Sometimes it doesn't work out for them. So it's not like every episode is like the bad guy gets caught. We know he's going to jail. Sometimes they get off. Yep. Um, actually, There's I think good episodes. Say, yeah, in, in CSI in CSI Vegas, Tarantino had like a two episode arc in that show. Oh, that Favorite. was the feet special. That was the feet ah. special. Hey, Nick, can you be... go ahead and download that one for Dion? Just you know, <laughs> that was the that was the episode that had to be edited fairly heavy for television because of how many n words he threw in there for no reason. Yeah, it was a little odd that like Gil Grissom was called that. I didn't, you know, mm -hmm. I didn't get it, I was like Jesus, dude, like fucking calm oh, down, God. take your baggage away. No, from my you. no, no, um, the, dude, the, the one I like, there was this, um, there was this older, there was a blonde woman in uh CSI Miami. She was like a she had like a southern accent, she was real cute. Oh my god, she was great. It wasn't Marg Helgenberger from like she, what CSI is she in? I don't know. Uh, she's, she's in Vegas, she's in she's Vegas, in the original. original. Yeah, okay, because she was at WrestleMania 21. That's all I know her from. Is, <laughs> hey, it's Mark Helgenberger. I'm like, <laughs> getting well, she's all, well, she Holy was. Shit. You know, I mean, she was also in Bad Boys 1, so. Yep. And Taylor. Sanchez Ruiz, you're late. Ooh. 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 You're about to get reassigned. No, I just saw the AEW numbers from last night. They need to just Woo! fucking get that shit. Hey, Kendo, let's yeah. talk about AEW numbers. So let's do that. Um, let me let me just write something down real quick and then we'll uh we'll close out our show this evening folks thank you for joining us hit that thumbs up button to let youtube know that you enjoy this content and to let us know as well and if you're listening please give us a five-star review not for our egos but because it helps us become more searchable in the index as things change and a more equal and fair playing field arrives on the internet wcbs is growing at a great rate Surprise, surprise. You can't keep a good bullshitter down. So, folks, join us on this rise to 200K. And then, like I say, each and every week, I want the gold, sucker, right here. A gold play button. I'll fucking throw out the Avengers. I don't care about them anymore. But the gold play button is bigger <laughs> than the Avengers. It's bigger than Thor. Shit, Thor's not worthy to carry that shit. So keep Molnir. We'll take the gold. But until then, folks, keep watching. Keep uh, subscribing. Keep spreading the word of WCBS. And keep it fun, fun each and every Thursday night. I need water, but I'm going to wait because I don't feel like getting up. So, uh, where were we? Oh, yeah. Uh, the that was for Law and Order. Yes. AEW. So, let me pull up the AEW graphic for uh, the sake of the listeners out there. And, I, you know, WrestleMania is over, and I'm really kind of out of pro wrestling mode, or I thought I was, uh, because... I got, like I said, the call to go to AEW, and then I have SmackDown tickets for next Friday, so I'll be at the draft. So if you guys watch that, maybe you'll be able to see me on TV. Cool. Oh, yeah. Now, uh, folks, we're just putting this graphic up here because it's AEW's newest pay-per-view. We're not actually going to, you know what, let me get a picture, a better picture. Give me a second. And it happens uh, in my hometown of St. Louis, Missouri. I know you're not going. No. <laughs> he's, not, he's not driving back for that bullshit. No. Oh. No, I mean, maybe if you paid me to do it, I'd be like, all right, I could probably swing this, but not that interested. And what's it gonna take? Sold you? A, what's it gonna well, cost? 100 grand. I'll ask my uncle Tony Khan to spot me 100 grand <laughs> so you can go and shit yeah. on his show live. They have sold a lot of tickets though, but oh. that's also because St. Louis is a pretty hot wrestling market, like even during the downtimes and. Everything St. Louis usually sells out. The, even the house shows, they usually sell most of the tickets. So it's a bit misnomer. That's why they're having the pay per view in St. Louis because they know they can sell out. Oh yeah, like Chicago. Well, yeah, like that's that's the thing I always like to keep clear. I always do want AEW to win. I mean, maybe I've bought almost all of their pay per views and I paid cash for. Oh, not cash, but you know what I'm saying. I paid for. Them. I didn't spend <laughs> anything. You know, I, I went mean, Tony Khan's here. I did. I just fucking made it rain on him. My point I'm making though is I did support this company for a long time and they keep doing shit to disappoint me. And so I'm just kind of checked out. I don't care anymore. 
because it's been a couple of years of it. Eh, like their big Wembley show we bought, we went over at Phil's and we watched it and had a great time. And then we watched the next one and we were like, Oh, what the hell? And then I think we watched the one after that and we, it was background noise for us. We couldn't even pay attention to it. Like you guys are really falling off hard and you know, bringing in edge and bringing all these guys from the past. You made one of my favorite wrestlers suck. Like it's the same guy. He probably has more creative reign, but it's not exciting anymore. It's mm. edge was cool. Edge retired. It should have been done. It's a company full of this, but apparently all the criticism that we have may not matter at all because AEW is allegedly hugely profitable. Uh, would you guys believe that if that if I told you that right now? No. 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 Well, I'm looking up some numbers right here, but I I'm assuming it's mostly it's TV money. Say what? I'm assuming it's mostly the, the TV money they're getting from TNT and probably knowledge. Well, right here, according to Forbes, AEW is officially placed as number three on the most valuable combat sports promotions for 2024 with $2 billion valuation and revenue of $250 million in total revenue for 2023. The top draws for the company are listed as the Elite and John Moxley. It's also well, worth I've noting that UFC. Here they can say that's not true. Now, it's also worth noting that the UFC stood head and shoulders above the rest with a value of $11.3 billion. At WWE placed at second place with six point eight billion, followed by AEW at two billion. We also have one championship at one point three billion and matchroom boxing at eight hundred fifty million. So that gives you the full range of what these combat sports are making. That closes out the top five. But uh, what do you guys think of that, Kenda? You start. First. Are they saying that's what they made, or that they're saying that's what they're worth? As the value. Worth. So it's like I told you earlier today, I can buy a house for $500,000. I can have a vault put in the basement and put $3 million in it. That does not make my house worth $3.5 million. So the valuation of AEW is probably heavily dependent on the money that Tony Khan has just like put forward and said, this is what AEW has in the bank. So it's a bit of a misnomer, especially considering the images from the shows that they put on that, and the Wrestle Ticks does a really good job of showing that, like, they may go to an arena. They may show that they have 5,000 people through the turnstiles, but tickets tickets sold might only be 2,000, and tickets distributed might be, like, 5,000. Tickets distributed is way different than tickets sold. Those are tickets just given away to people that come to the show. And they got a ratings bump a little bit last week when they had their biggest star, CM Punk, on the show, apparently. And this week, I'm looking at the WrestleNomics just put it out. Last night's AEW Dynamite. Anybody want to guess on what the average viewer number was? Uh, I'm going to say 50,000. 890,000. Um, I don't know, 100,000. 762,000. So they're down again. They got their big bump from the uh, the Big Bang Theory coming on or being on and the overrun. But here's why I think it's funny that they talk about the elite being such a draw. During the 8.15 to 8.30 hour, they had 865,000 viewers. During the 8.30 to 8.45 hour, that featured the Young Bucks backstage promo, as well as some dudes versus the Young Bucks and Kazuchika Okada, that number went from 865 to 725. They lost 140,000 viewers. And then, Jeez. oh, that's just people saying they're busy, blah, blah, blah. From the 845 to 9 o'clock hour that featured the post-match and uh, Chris Jericho, they went up to 744,000. So there was a bunch of people that just changed the channel when the Young Bucks came on. And then they they got some more numbers, but then, you know, it went down again it was, uh, during the time when uh, Orange Cassidy was featured on TV. So – regardless like they're not turning a profit i saw pictures people were posting today on several wrestling group websites showing that the aew fight forever game is now a ten dollar clearance at walmart i saw so, that that game didn't make any money they lost a bunch of money on that that they fucking sank into the game and then last night i was listening to an interview that kenny omega did the other day and he totally baby faced himself at least to me and i'm like maybe this dude ain't so bad but I don't know, man. Like, I've been on record numerous times. As much as people want to say I'm an AEW hater, I am not. I hate what they're doing. 
And I'm pissed at them for selling us a bill of goods. Like I've said from the beginning, we were told we were going to get sports-based presentation for professional wrestling. We were going to get the alternative to what the WWE was giving us at the time, which was Vince's fucking, you know, fever dreams of what he thinks is fucking pro wrestling. And that went out the window real quick. And it just turned into fucking shitty indie wrestling and now the wwe is on a hot streak and they're kicking ass and we're in a time frame where they don't have any excuses for why their people are not turning and in, tuning into their tv they're not up against anything there's no sports really going on right now with the exception of the nba and the nhl playoffs that'll be starting soon that they would be up against on top of the fact that i always thought that was an extremely lame excuse because I can't think that the hardcore pro wrestling audience, there's a whole lot of crossover between that. I mean, yes, I will watch NHL playoffs over fucking professional wrestling, but that's just one person. I am probably a microcosm. I'm, I'm an outlier of that bracket. So, again, like, I don't – like, there, I can see that being their worth, but in terms of profitability, there's no fucking way considering how many empty seats are at their shows – and how they cannot crack a million for the life of them. And their biggest bump in the ratings is always at the very beginning of the show during the overrun from the Big Bang Theory that's on TBS, probably for the bazillionth fucking time at this point, or TNT, and then rolls whatever's on before that, and it rolls into the dynamite because there's always a massive drop-off during that first quarter hour where people have changed the channel because it's like, oh, I was watching that in the background. Now it's over. Well, they they already got that number for that quarter hour, but then they change the channel and then that number is not there. And that's why you always see like a hundred thousand drop off between eight and eight fifteen. If it wasn't so funny, it would be sad, but uh that is the state of AEW in 2024. <laughs> I lost a lot yeah. of respect for all the jungle boy Jack Perry shit. And and again. For full context, right? The thing that everyone has to remember is pro wrestling is lumped in as combat sports. And that ranking, the top of that list was the UFC. The UFC, who is now partnered with the WWE. So Kendo said a lot of right things. And the thing that got the WWE in trouble, the reason why we are now having this resurgence in the WWE is because drum roll, please. Da, 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 the thing going on during the summer are UFC pay-per-views. And this went back to when Jeff and I were in, in at MSU, you know, the low point for a pay-per-view by the WWE historically have been during the summer. And for years, Vince didn't have anything to worry about until the two thousands when the UFC became a thing. So, yeah, you know, there was a window just recently, you know, lowest numbers in Raw history, you know, the whole thing that we had since 2015 with Roman Reigns, and they turn it around because the UFC was being seen as the top, the, epi the, the, the pinnacle of combat sports. So in that time frame, AEW comes out of nowhere, Cody Rhodes gets fired, he goes off, he creates a company with the owner of the Jaguars. Make no mistake about it, the reason why Kendall gives him shit is because Tony ain't got shit. His dad owns the, the darn Jaguars. And darn Jaguars. Darn Jaguars. I'm you know I'm trying to limit my, my curse words in this in this in this channel world. You know what I'm saying? YouTube monetization, baby. But you know, the analogy he made about you just putting money into anything. That's not Tony putting money into anything. You know, it's getting a $2 billion appraisal because they're still on TNT. TNT has their brand name as a championship on their show, and they still have uh, multiple partnerships with major organizations that broadcast their product. Now, say, hypothetically, TNT were to tonight say we're no longer involved, take our name off that championship. You're not getting three shows and um, and you're not going to get supplemental um, products from our lower channels. That evaluation would plummet. So mm -hmm. the, 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 the billion dollar valuation is because by design they have other partnerships, you know. That was what made Vince change his mind. It wasn't that, yes, the fans hijacking a WrestleMania was huge, 
But USA had said, hey, um, we give you a prime slot of our fucking TV time. And we pay you a lot of money. Make it better. You know, we all got mad about the Kofi thing. You know, we were getting mad about the Brock Lesnar thing. That was because Fox, where SmackDown, SmackDown came on a major network for years, and they said, hey, we'll give you Fox, but we expect someone with a big name to be your champion. And that's why Brock Lesnar beat Kofi Kingston. So, you know, evaluations are tricky. There's a lot of things that go into it. But just like Kendall said, you know, filling the seats and that being on television affects the real thing behind that billion dollar evaluation. And I can, to Kendall's point, I cannot imagine that TNT is very happy with shows going into a big pay per view. You have people leaving during multiple main events. Mm -hmm. So, um, that's that's where they're at for sure. And this, you know, that that could very well change in the third or fourth quarter of 2024, let alone 2025. So, uh, you know, wrestling fans have seen this multiple times. That's what got WCW in trouble. They were worth a couple billion or whatever, even when things were shitty in the, in, in in 2000. Um, and obviously, going in 2001, they were saying the same thing: we're worth this much money. Yeah, WWE is number one, but we're number two, you know. But the channel that broadcast their Monday night show said, This is garbage. We're selling all this stuff. Good luck to you. And AEW is a lot closer to that than they would like to admit. And this recent bullshit they pulled with releasing the video is proof of that because it is not keeping asses in seats, let alone putting asses in seats. If you have a guy on a major channel like ours who's filming people leaving and then they leave themselves, you know, that $2 billion assessment is temporary. Well said, Dion. Well said. Um, sorry, I had to get my... Uh, we're going to close out the show in a fun way. I had to bring back the green screen. I didn't rest Professor there X would just back, come back automatically. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. Where should we... Uh, what should I put in the background? Tony Khan, the AEW show you're at. No, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah. <laughs> it won't let me do videos yet. Really? Oh damn. We'll, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. I mean, we always go back to Red Lobster. R.I.P. Unlimited Shrimp. <laughs> I could go back to that nice ass apartment you liked so much, Dion. There we go. There we go. <laughs> I'm an That's adult. Nasty. This is a nice ass apartment. I can have my my cute white girl and my hatches run around in that apartment. <laughs> Your hats. <laughs> Does D2 know you call him that? <laughs> no. Damn. <laughs> as hell. And, and you know what? He never will. He never will. He, he never will. He'll listen back and I'll be like, I wasn't talking about you. You have until episode 380, whatever, to, to where you were like, damn, he was talking about me. Damn. <laughs> damn, daddy. Listen, I talk shit about you on the internet, D2, but I love you, even though you drive me crazy. Mama's boy. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> got real. They got real. Goddamn mama's boy. You like my background, Nick? Uh, there you go. There you go. <laughs> Listen, He's Mario got my hand on my computer. <laughs> Damn right. He'd never lose if Michael was in that game. Um, I've never heard of a Canadian top hat, and I don't. Think oh I'm God! Do it, but uh, thank I you, think, Father I think, I think I think we know what that is from the text messages and the whole. Thing. Yeah, I'm just gonna go with the context of what he wrote there, and just be like, yeah, I yeah. think I know what he's talking about. Yeah. Thanks, Uncle E. Context is king. So, yeah, thanks to him. I understand <laughs> that now. So, our friend Jack White says those last three recommendations pale in comparison to the series High School DXD in terms of fan service. Hold on. Let me get all of these on screen. He says, also, he says, plus, I'd love to see you and Dion react to High School DXD. And then Jack sent in another Ooh. generous super chat. He says, some of these series recommendations, Psychopaths, Star Blazers, I know that one, and the original and the reboot, Legend of the Galactic Heroes, both the original and the reboot, Black Clover. I know Black, Black Clover's on my list. Mm -hmm. uh, we're mm -hmm. in 2023, I'm 
Boom. There we go. Um, yeah, Jack, we will, Dion and I will watch these and we'll start putting stuff out there for you guys. Because we want to get together and watching random shit is like our thing. So it's like a, it's like, it's like yeah, a, it it's a structure of the channel. So we will fucking watch this shit, man. Yeah, I was hoping it would be like so at the beginning of the year, I was really into these made for TV movies, and I was hoping that was gonna be like our weird thing. It's like, yeah, let's watch made for TV movies and text each other about how shitty they are. And then I just stopped. And so <laughs> I just we've gotta make a stream of it. We've gotta make a stream of it. It's it's difficult to watch it because you uh because yeah, when you came up for New Year's, I watched the earthquake one, and then I went on a kick of watching them too. So but it's tough to watch by yourself because Hillary won't want to watch them with me. And literally <laughs> the only friends that I have that will watch those with me are you guys. So but we should actually make it a thing, man. That'd be that'd be fun to just watch fucking the, you know, what was the made for TV big event movie in 1999? Watch it. It's a because that shit is a perfect time Storm capsule. Of the century. I remember I, I remember, yeah, I, remember I, I remember Atomic Train. Atomic Train was the, one of them. Like it was ridiculous. Um, I recognize was, that the, name, man. I got yeah, there I gotta, was, I'm gonna have to look it up. There's a Ke there was a Kevin Sawa one that he where he was in a, he was one about about fucking you know um tornadoes as well. Uh that uh -huh. came out before Twister. Well, it came out the same year as Twister for sure. So that was, was Dude, weird. Yeah, Made for TV movies watch. with a shit. They were awesome. That shit was that shit was wild, man. Because people and there are a lot of movies that are on, you know, that are that are recognized on on uh, you know physical media that people forget were TV movies, yeah. So like Storm of the Century, <laughs> yes, yes, uh, yes. That's the true. Movie, yeah. yeah, the miniseries. Yeah. Our friend the Carmel Colonial says, "Okay, I give. Why is Superman eating a lobster?" Well, the show was talking about Superman, which is still for the next eighteen minutes. Today is the anniversary of the first publication of Action Comics number one, and. We talked about Red Lobster going out of business. So today's visual puzzle was reference yeah. to that. So, folks, thank you for playing along at home. Here you go. Let's zoom in so we can help the fine folks in the back see the uh, the reason why the Carmel Colonial is questioning tonight's show, folks. So here you have in this upper region right here, Superman looks happy. He's part Clark Kent. Well, well he's throwing well, this man off because John Hammond from fucking Jurassic Park is over here eating his dinner. But it's not as delicious looking as this actual red lobster that they're eating at Red Lobster. And look at the yeah. view of this red lobster. <laughs> yeah, I'm confused why Clark Kent is in is in a is in a Superman costume. It's very strange. It's very very strange. Yeah, why would this Clark? How how do you look just like Superman, man? Like, what do you do? Yeah. <laughs> I don't get it. Crazy. He does a lot of kettlebells. That's what he does. <laughs> With like, I mean, I can see Superman being a lobster fan. I mean, come on, dudes. You know, he's <laughs> intelligent. He's educated. You know, he likes. Dude, he you likes know white women. You know? What? <laughs> probably eats a lot of lobster. No, that's Static Shock and Black Panther. Calm down. Um, right, that's true. Pretty... Dion, I can attest no, no, to dating no, the white no, woman eating a lot of lobster. Girlfriend, like Latina in the show. <laughs> probably, probably, probably. I think he Static Shock like Latinas. Him and Miles Morales like they like the Latina girls. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But no, let's, 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 let's be honest. The the minute the minute that that Superman would crack into that fucking lobster, Aquaman would be like, "What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> what the hell are you doing right now?" Oh, sorry. I'm just playing with the light. That's what the hell. I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, we can tell. I'm trying to create a lightsaber effect on screen. Okay, how cool would that be? <laughs> Okay, no, I'm not really. I'm just, I'm tired. Yeah, they're just fucking around now. <laughs> uh, okay, let's look, keep reading these super chats. The Carmel Colonial, thank you very much for keeping that name. That is one of our most random things here on the show, and we love it. Uh, Xavier to God says, is AEW better or worse than WCW 2000s? Better, but that's I'll not a very better. high bar. It, they are we're better. Be we're, we're just, we're deep. This is, this is AEW. They're going through their 1995 phase right now. Yeah, w, WCW in 2000 and 2001 was barely watchable. I know because I was there. And while AEW to I me personally is yeah. barely watchable. <laughs> well, I was watching WWF too. I was watching them both, but. I know you were. WCW, WCW I felt so bad for WCW fans back in 2000, 2001. Because I remember like, you know, um, the, uh, what was the, the pro wrestling magazine? Whatever. And then WCW had their recap show. On like Sundays, on 
um, whatever the major channel is equivalent for uh, for TNT or whatever it was. But like like just watching the recaps and stuff, I was like, damn, that's bad. You know, like oh shit, like I'm glad that Eddie Guerrero is with my company. You know, so it was uh, yeah. NWO fans were hurting back then, boy. They were hurting yeah. back in 2001. Yeah, it, it it was very bad. AEW is better than BCW 2000s, but again, that's not a very fucking high bar. Hey, Samoa Joe's champion. I'm that's you know, a they're plus. not completely lost yet. Oh, Samoa Joe, man, I love that dude. I wish his WWE run would have been longer or maybe even better. He should have been world champion a couple times, but that's just me. How do you feel about that one? <laughs> Both of the guys just 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 left. <laughs> oh shit! Sorry, I'm trying to set up the background for something yeah, cool. Yeah, about what? In the background. I was I'm sitting What's here trying to set up the background for something cool. Uh, what was I even fucking asking, Nick? I'm I'm. <laughs> you're so tired. You're so just. You're at the end of this, man. Yeah. Well, you're, these... you're talking about Samoa Joe. Samoa Joe. There you go. Samoa Joe. Life sucks and then you die. Uh no, actually, that's a Vince McMahon quote. There we go. See, the only thing I don't like about our, our new green screen setup is you can only use JPEG files. So, like, I have to... I, I'll if download you, these cool pictures in the wrong are format. You, are you using StreamR to do it? Yeah, that's the only way I can for now. Okay, well, yeah, we'll have to get you... We'll, once again, we'll have to... We'll have to yeah, man, well, you can save... Just, take some screenshots and save them as JPEGs. It'll be a little um, bit lower quality, <laughs> but if you find some of your shit, that's great. Dude, talk about talk about a topic right now. Vincent Kennedy McMahon. Ooh, Where ooh. on the Vincent McMahon were you touched or shat upon? <laughs> right, right. Oh, oh, no. But uh, but no, we'll, we'll get you set up with OBS, and I think you can do videos through OBS in the background. You can do gifts and things like that as well with through that. So, we'll, I we'll just get love it the up. more I move this, the picture's different. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's, gotta love green screen, man. <laughs> Oh, uh, Jack White, another series recommendation. Thank you, Jack. Uh, he says, Bungal Stray Dogs. And he also says, I want to see your guys' reaction to high school DXD main character and his perverse actions into the girls of that series. Okay, Dion, then. Gonna, this is going to be a weird series, Dion. Yeah, I, I agree. think that's, that I think that's, the second, that's, that's the second or third message that Jack White has sent about um, high school DXD. <laughs> So we have to watch it, I guess. Like you gotta yeah. watch it, man. And, I, and there's a time based hype. on his previous messages, the 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 long time that he's been a fan. Um, I'm sure that there's a hook, there's something that he's not telling us about that. So mm. we gotta figure out what it is, and hopefully it's not too wild. <laughs> Maybe well, I anime wilder, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, that's that's true. That's true. <laughs> you guys have fun with that. Fucking <laughs> totally yeah. Have that shit that'll change change your world view. <laughs> change your <laughs> you watch it and you're like, I'm not going to Japan. Yeah, I'm like, I, I mean, no, the the the, the bad half, you're like, I'm going to Japan, I'm going to Japan to get in trouble. <laughs> yeah. We'll go to a sumo wrestling y'all match. Y'all putting this in your cartoons? What? <laughs> <laughs> What's so guys, like I said, like I said before, I'm ready. I'm ready to get to get to get into um, whatever, like a, a backroom game of of uh, of Russian roulette. I'm okay with that. I'll, I'll you know, I'll. Right. I'll oh, dude, exactly. I'll go get a red headband. We'll play it just like the Deer Hunter. <laughs> <laughs> Does this work for me? Like this, like a T-shirt? We'll do a play on yeah. <laughs> Here you go. You're all set. I oh, know, man. So. Uh, Guys, I think it's time to put this baby to bed. I think it's time for that. So, um, anything else you guys want to say before we uh, put this baby to bed? Free um, yeah, Don't fuck with Mother Nature like like Dubai has done. Yeah. Oh yeah, you tell us about that real quick. Hold on, I'll go to that Dubai. I'll go crazy. to Dubai. <laughs> Dubai has had forty eight hours of rain that they have not. It, it's more rain than they, than they have in an, an entire year of of <laughs> of, of rainfall. They've been cloud seeding, and they're saying that's not the problem because they he had predicted rains coming in. Well, this is the first time I've heard of it fucking flooding like this to the point where it's damaging 
like cars and buildings and and okay planes cannot even take off or land because there's so much rain yeah. on the tarmac seriously like, the videos insane. of planes trying to take off and they they can't yeah it's their infrastructure their infrastructure was not built for that shit it's fu- dude look it up on twitter man it is wild like dubai is fighting for its life right now yeah don't they have that big huge building too the tallest building in the world the mia khalifa or whatever it's called <laughs> <laughs> pretty There's much yeah inside that tower <laughs> yeah here we are here's dubai right here folks oh good see it looks like a and sunny I'm day here. Doesn't look that bad. <laughs> I'm drowning in Dubai. <laughs> yeah, it, it looks like don't, it. it don't, looks don't like travel it. to Dubai by yourself. I can't swim, Dion. Help! <laughs> I can't stand swim up. Here. Just stand, stand oh. up, you tall. Oh, oh, okay. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, but yeah, but because of. Well, and 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 apparently they've been cloud seeding for a while, and you know, I think I think it backfired, and they got a little too much rain, a little, a little more they bargained for. But the good thing is, it's all fresh water; they don't have to like you know desalinate from the ocean anymore. Well, maybe maybe they do, but you know, we'll see what they do, man. But that you know, you know, shout out to the to the motherfuckers working for a living in Dubai. I know shit ain't thing, easy right now. One thing I learned recently that the new thing in Dubai is for a lot of these like trillionaires to import field trucks from the u.s and drive them around i'm not kidding like 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 the truck from twister they want that one the way it is so they can drive it around not do not not bugattis not lamborghinis not and not in that shit they want like a 1989 ford field truck to drive i i got an idea let's start a business where we get really shitty american stuff and sell it to wealthy people in other countries and make them think they want like i am 100 yeah, okay that. percent that's yo, ours yo, I can do it. i'll call the lawyer that's not the even that's not even a joke if you get you, you can say you get this brand name big enough where you want to do a partnership with you know some yeah. uh yeah. some <laughs> old baron say. that thinks that it's profitable to invest in a youtube channel fucking do it because they do yeah. shit like that all the time Jeff, I also I also heard that a lot of the cars there, people will just leave them because like and you're talking like six figure cars, they'll just leave because like if if you ever if you ever run if you're if you're ever in debt in Dubai, they will arrest you, yeah. put you in jail, they won't make you pay it over time. Oh, you're it's geez. it's a crime to have debt there, so you're fucked. Um, so well, when people that rich is there really an excuse anymore? That's true, but people people will just leave the country and leave their six figure cars just everywhere. And so why don't we go do a thing, a series called Dubai Debt Collectors, where we go through Dubai and we just take shit that people leave and then we resell it on fucking Timu and do a sponsor deal like that. <laughs> so so to that point, the you know, uh car theft in Dubai is crazy because of shit like that. So they they you know they park their shit on the street, blah 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 blah. And you know, the abundance of high priced cars in a small area is a big deal in Dubai. So, you know, like a lot of like, you know, professional security people, like they, you know, they're, you know, security, you make a lot of money in Dubai. Say you build a car park with walls, fence, and a couple cameras because it's an issue over there. So, like, yeah, you yeah, know, I mean, you, I'm not, that's a serious, we roll to Dubai, you can see an abandoned Ferrari, hop in that bad boy and steal it off. It's, it, they make a lot of money <laughs> out of Dubai. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, I do. and, and, and you're talking, you're talking like, yeah, big, big, because they have it. They have a mall. Mm-hmm. They have a mall in the middle of the desert that you can ski in. Why? Because they're well, in the middle why of not? the fucking desert. Exactly. Because the why not? Exactly. You answered your Because why not? You got you got that much money. Fuck Dude, it. They, Let's they, build a city they, in the desert. They terraformed a beach to look like like a map of Earth. <laughs> like really? they, they built they money. an island there for the go. UFC. Yeah, they did. They did. Yeah. yeah. They have they have beyond fuck you money. <laughs> yeah, buddy. <laughs> Jeff's over here. Just fucking around in the green screen. It's a great feature, man. Just, <laughs> I can become Gary Busey in a minute. <laughs> anyway, uh, we have super chats to read. Uh, thank oh you, folks. Oh, my God. Uh, Dr. Coffin Nails. I shit, I can't read it at the same time. Um, <laughs> FYI, April 18th is actually a copyright date of Action Comics number one. The most likely actual release date is probably May 3rd, 1938. 
So what you're telling me is James Gunn made a fake holiday out of a bullshit date for social Probably. media? I mean, that, I mean, that seems like the most James Gunn thing to do. Yeah. Fucking Does Mr. Better at the microphone? over here. Yes. <laughs> well, I'll try it this way. <laughs> All right, so is that that's Gary Busey talking? Is that cool? Is that convincing? Like he's in the room with me right now? <laughs> sure, yeah, why not? Man. We'll ah! <laughs> Mr. Jeff, Joshua, Dion, yeah, get me a fucking lighter. <laughs> uh, thank you, Doctor Coffinales. Jack White. <laughs> if you want a sneak peek of what I'm talking about, just Google the name Rias Grimori. I'll take a screenshot. I'm not gonna. Oh my god! Let's not do that right now. What yeah, let's just take a screenshot. Jeff, no, Jeff, don't do it on your computer, okay? We we need your computer. To run oh, I'm not. I'll do I'm it, not. I'll do it don't on worry. mine. <laughs> Thank you, Nick. Take one for the team. Run it through your 47 AI deep fake VPN Nord software security systems, uh, and Friendster, and we'll be safe. <laughs> <laughs> and pause. Thank you very much can. for your generous super chat. Um, he says, so in 2021, I went down a deep rabbit hole on the Defoe murders of 1974. Since then, I have been going over the idea of more domestic violence thriller type Amityville movies based on the family and the crime that would follow. The DeFeo murders. Oh, is yeah. that the one where the that's guy... That's Amityville Horror. Oh, okay, sorry. Yeah. That's one. Okay. I was thinking of the, mis... uh, the one where the guy got caught on America's Most Wanted, the old man. It was like in the same part of the country. Anyway, yeah, I would watch that kind of stuff. I like horror movies or I like those types of stories that are kind of, you know, dark. Yeah, man. That's, that's why, that's it why doesn't have to be a lot of money, man. A little bit of, little bit of truth. Makes oh, it yeah. all the better, baby. Oh, yeah. A little bit of meat, a little bit of onion makes it better, too, Dion. A little bit of meat, a little bit of onion. Okay, guys, I'm trying this out real quick. I'm Because I didn't realize the green screen <laughs> thing was so powerful. Let's see if it works on my phone. If Gary Busey... Yeah. Here. Oh, oh, yes! yes. <laughs> the ghost of Gary Busey. It's like a Legend of Zelda puzzle. Hold on, I need to fucking open my lens <laughs> Oh, my God, dude. do 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 He's having way too much fun with this. Yes, he is. <laughs> Jeff, Jeff, with great power comes great responsibility. God damn it. Yeah, don't. I've gone mad. Who's the green screen? I have I'm the green the screen right. god. <laughs> anyway, and pause. I got to say, um, Amityville Horror was always awesome until you found out that some of the, well, not the DeFeo part, but the other part of the movie being in the house being haunted was bullshit. And I always kind of disappointed yeah. me. I'm like, that's Dude, the one there, I wanted to believe so many, in. There's so many knockoff Amityville movies right now. It's hilarious. Yeah. But none of their remakes have Ryan Reynolds. So um, that's true. That's true. Saw that in theaters. So did I. Took a girl in high school. We saw that in Sin City. That was the extent of our relationship. But hey, they were Sin City. But no, I, I would uh, watch this kind of stuff. If, if you make it like an A2470 style picture, you know, oh, like, yeah, a, like how X yeah. was. Yeah, I could get down to that big time. Speaking of that, Maxine's coming out soon. So, oh yeah, I saw the trailer yeah. during Civil War. Dude, it looks so good. Looks it so does. Good. I I wish I loved X. Everybody loved it. I thought it was a little underwhelming because it was like Texas Chainsaw Massacre with a porno twist. I needed a little more to be blown away. But it was still a well-made movie. I'm not like oh, yeah. knocking it. It just didn't. Oh no, no, it wasn't an I... original concept that I went whoa. No, no, I, I, I agree with you. Yeah, I definitely need a little bit more, a little bit more to it for sure. And then Pearl happened, and then you got the backstory, which is kind of weird. But I'm, I'm here for Maxine, like LA in the '80s during, during when that kill, those that killing was happening. I'm, I'm here for it, man. It's gonna be good. Dude, I see. So you know what I want out of horror? I want more horror with a historical backdrop of something else fucked up. Like set something during when Dahmer's going nuts or this or that. Like they're doing with the Night Strangler. I love that concept because it's. It adds an extra layer. It makes the story feel, I don't want to say it makes it feel more real. It just, I don't know. It it it, it makes that story have more weight, I guess I should say. Yeah, but uh, we'll see. Going. Okay, so let me get the thing pulled up real quick for the Super Chat. Uh, here we are, and boom. So, uh, where are is the next one? So here we are from Xavier to God. And by the way, uh, M-Pause, I love going down silly rabbit holes. The iceberg videos usually get me going uh, oh, yes. for hours. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Those are like crap. We should do an iceberg video ourselves. Like pick a really stupid topic. Like the, I don't know. 
we'll figure it there, out. There's so many. There's uh, so many. There are a lot of them. Yeah, we'll get real. We'll get serious. We'll all have green screens and black lights. We'll make it look like we're on location. <laughs> we'll be like the uh, what is it? The NWA from Hot Fuzz. The greater good. Mm-hmm. Oh my God. Xavier to God. Finally, he says, "Okay, guys, I turned 21 this Saturday. Happy birthday, man! Enjoy that shit." Uh, what yeah, are you guys enjoy, doing for 420? Enjoy that day. Enjoy that day. Uh, uh, let's answer. We're going to answer two questions for you, Xavier the God, even though you didn't ask. First off, what are you guys doing for 420? So it's tomorrow, right? So we're just going to no, do what we always we'll, do on Fridays. Ooh, 420. I'm going to get, I'm going to probably pick up. Oh, it's shit. Saturday. Devin's going to his dad's. Fuck. I was gonna get high and take the whole family to a movie. Well, <laughs> I, can't, I can't take I can't take my, my big boy, and my nephew, but I'm my it's my plan. Uh, Do you need me to drive up and go see the movie with yes, you? Because yes. I could, you know, you pick up. stop it, stop it, drive up. Just stop it, drive up. So when Jeff gets here, uh, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna get messed up and make them drive me to a movie and to dinner, and um, I'm gonna I'm gonna wild out a little bit. Yeah, Jeff, t- take him to go watch the uh, Guy Ritchie movie. Ooh, uh, the uh, Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare. Yeah, yeah, yes. dude. It's, That's uh, the plan. It's it's uh, it's it's uh, Henry Cavill and, the, and these dudes kill, killing killing uh, Nazis for two hours. So it's fun. Yep, so, him and uh, Jack Reacher. Yep, yep. If I if I actually do show up, like, are you going to be surprised? If you were to act, I would be surprised. As in, we were joking but if you were i wouldn't be mad i'd be like fuck yeah dude it's 420 we're gonna have a great weekend let's hang out i just got paid and everything <laughs> oh uh, yeah uh it'll, there's gonna be a time it may be 420 it may be some other month or day uh but i'm just gonna randomly come up and visit maybe i'll tell hillary to surprise you know to surprise you just so Hell she yeah. knows uh xavier to god thank you very much though i also wanted to ask uh you guys what did you do for your 21st birthday i Drove to Ohio to get my new license so I could buy alcohol for that night's party. Oh God, I I did that once. Someone got arrested. I anyway. didn't do anything on my actual twenty first birthday. My parents called me. I went to so November. I graduated, so I went to work, and then I met Hillary and you. Who graduated the spring after you turned twenty? That's right. I graduated the spring after I turned 21. So that I turned 21, 20, 20, 2010. Yeah, I had to work still. Yeah, shut up. I went to, I went to I, yeah, so I did go to class. I went to work. And then I think I just got drunk at home. And then that weekend I got out of work and I met you and Hillary and she forgot my clothes. And oh, the pants, they were the wrong ones. We had to go back, and you were like really pissed. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you were really yeah. mad over a pair of pants, but you know, we had a good time anyway. No, I wasn't mad over a pair of pants. We had a specific situation. I said I left them in a certain place, grab those, and she you know what? I'm gonna step away. I'm gonna step away. I you I'm brought it up. Away. So I'm not gonna sure to explain why she, I, I gave specific instructions and I'm she out. didn't follow them. So I was frustrated after working, and it's just like I, I gave you specifics, it was by this thing in this place, that's where those pants will be. She goes, oh, I thought they were in the middle. Why would you think that? I get, I said where they were. <laughs> this why was like 14 years ago. <laughs> you brought it up. Why is it? Why does the timeline matter? You brought this up. I didn't bring it up. You try to paint me in a certain light. I'm making you sure already you painted yourself with it, with the very broad brush, brother. So don't worry. It wasn't me. It wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> oh boss, thank you very much for your generous super chat he says thought about involving the guy who did the whale to help out there are so many details on how a broken or a family of the defeos uh were that it would need to be shocking from an emotional point oh yeah am i the only one that hasn't seen the whale still uh, no i haven't seen it either yeah oh so I, none I, of us I, have seen it i, I know oh, yeah. i watched i, I, I watched the because brendan fraser won an oscar for it. i'm just assuming it's good no, I know. I, I had to, I, I I had to go see it because he was nominated for it, and I had to go watch it. I think I watched it the week or two before. It's it's good. Is it's it good. so? I didn't have enough time to see the whale before the Oscars, but I prioritized short rounds, so I went and saw everything everywhere all at once. Because like it was a weird world where it's Brendan Fraser and short round up for an Oscar. I'm like, I gotta support this to you know 
in some way help it. And then they both won. And that was our best Oscar live stream because we were really happy for something. Everyone thinks we watch the Oscar party to be like, oh, yay, Hollywood. We're making fun of it 99.99% of the time. We mm -hmm. just happen to like Brendan Fraser and Kihu Kwan. Oh, of course. Yeah. And oh, so. yeah. Dude, that was great. Yeah, but uh, if it wasn't for Indiana Jones, honestly, or the Goonies, I wouldn't have cared. Like, I just love those movies so much. I was like, "Come on, yeah, you were in something I actually like." No, but it, but but no, when when you watch the whale, you'll be like, "Brendan Fraser's fucking back, dude." He is he his such... his comeback story is only second to Robert Downey Jr.'s. Yeah, he did so good in the whale. It's 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 amazing. It really is amazing. I will watch it soon. Um, I don't know why I'm trying to fix the lighting. The show's over. I guess I care about every frame. <laughs> All right. So, folks, we have reached the end of tonight's World Class Bullshitters podcast. It's been another wonderful night here on YouTube, X, uh, Twitter, and uh, Rumble as of now. So thank you to everybody who's joined us across all the platforms here on the Internet. Now, if you're ever wondering about our live schedule, we go live every Thursday night. We've been doing it since 2015. Same time, same channel. Join us each and every week. As you can tell, it keeps getting crazier. You never know what's going to happen, where we're going to be broadcasting from. Uh, shit on the fly. Tonight's show was a lot of fun. It was very different, but hopefully you enjoyed it and be on the lookout. We'll have clips. We'll have stuff from the show available on other platforms in the coming days. So you can find WCBS everywhere you want us and a whole lot more. Make sure you guys get ready for Bookbusters. We're going to be launching the Kickstarter over there in the by the end of the month to make sure everything's ready and be excited because that book is done. This isn't going to be a situation where you're going to be waiting. It's ready. So for everybody who's been an early adopter, thank you. You guys got some bonus stuff coming, but everybody else get ready for woke busters it's going to be the comic book event of 2024 2025 and moving forward but uh guys i think we have reached the end so uh unless there's any of other things you got to say right now i'm going to close it out the way i always do each and every week be smart be safe be cool but always be excellent to each other dot com com dot com dot com dot Nice shooting, son. What's your name? My name is Jeff. <laughs>